What's going on, gang? And welcome back to Scared of Normal. We're sitting down with Jabe Jones today. I'm pretty freaking excited about this one, man. Yeah, um, me too. Yeah, welcome to the roastery. We're stoked that you're here. Hyped. Hell yeah. You guys got a sick spot. Thanks, dude. Yeah, it's uh, it's cool. You're actually our second guest, so congratulations. Yeah. This is pretty cool. I'm stoked to be a part of the origin story. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> um, I guess let's get started with like, what are you doing out here in Colorado? Um, so my girlfriend actually lives out here and she's like a flight attendant and so I get to fly for free and I get to like come out here and you guys have some of the best parks ever. So I always love coming out here and hanging out with the homies and meeting new people. Hell yeah. 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 All right. We're pretty spoiled out here, man. Like the amount of concrete skate parks. You have no idea. (laughs) You have no idea. Like every time I look, like I was just in Connecticut actually, and I was like looking for skate parks and I was like, oh my gosh. Dude, it's so far and in between. Yeah. I think you guys have like 150 skate parks within like a 50 mile like radius or something like that. And like Florida has like... 20 yeah. like <laughs> within like, a 20 minute drive we have more like skate three parks hours in the apart. whole state yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah well let's back up real quick can you uh introduce yourself and then give us a little bit of a background on who you are and what you do who is jabe jones oh, i am jabe jones and i am a am writer for shadow sabrosa and then i write for a jewelry company called clocks and colors also and yeah i like riding a bike and and this is BMX as and well. BMX, yeah. yeah. So like, so yeah. I just, I'm an AM rider for those two companies, and I like traveling the world, just cruise my bike, filming with my friends. All right. All that good stuff. Sick. And then obviously Florida is home for you. Florida is home for me. Uh, Orlando specifically, been there my whole life. Um, Central Florida specifically. So uh, like Altamont, Popka area. Heck yeah. All that stuff. So. How do you feel over the last few years that Florida is becoming more popular than it's ever been? Uh, I mean, in, what, in a good way or in a, a positive I think way? In a good, I mean, I see a lot of people are moving to Florida. Like well, the last is it few like years. a Florida man kind of thing? Or are you talking about <laughs> I mean, BMX there's that too. But like just overall, like, I saw the other day that there's like 1,500 people a day moving to Florida or something like that. That's because of the mouse. Yeah. It's because of the Mickey Mouse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I always forget that's down there. Did, um, I mean, I, I, I always love Florida. I mean, I don't. I see why people want to move down there because, like, A, it's cheaper than most places in the world for sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's definitely hot as fuck, but, like, <laughs> it's 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 nice, man. Like, I don't think I see myself living anywhere else. I think Denver was the only other place that I was like, yeah. this place is awesome. I would move here if, like, half my friends lived here probably. Totally. But, like, yeah. it's like... Florida is just yeah. Well, it'll guys, always be home. You guys me. have an awesome scene down there too, which I'm sure really helps yeah. with like why it's so yeah. cool. There's been some good people that have came out of Florida, like yeah. some insane people. So, what's your uh, what's your local skate park down there? Um, I usually ride. I ride OSP a lot, which is uh, Orlando Skate Park. It's in downtown. Okay. Um, but uh, I mean, I kind of bounce around all over the place. Like like you said, like Florida doesn't have that many skate parks, so yeah. like. Things are usually like thirty minutes apart, so I kind of I if I I mostly ride street, you know, but like between like going to like my friends' backyard ramps and OSP yeah. and some other places, like I probably ride OSP the most. That's Hell where yeah. skate parks go. Yeah, I guess let's talk about the backyard ramps because those things look <laughs> insane. It seems like everybody yeah. down there has a backyard ramp. So yeah, yeah. So um, well, at first started like big boy, big boy bought a house. Uh, big boys, big boys uh. My homie that does YouTube, yep. he moved here from New Jersey like uh, like three years ago, uh, bought a house, and was like, I want to build a ramp. And so we did it, and then we ended up getting a deal with Skate Light, and Skate Lighted the whole thing. Damn. And uh, it is like, it's a it's a cool little like, it's a, he's got like a, bo- like a tiny box jump, and a sub box, and a wall, and all this stuff, but it's all super condensed, and like you have to think pretty fast. But that's, like, we always say that that's more, like, the yard that you can go and do tricks at because, like, everything's more spread out and yeah. simple. And then you have Trey's ramp, my Dude. brother. And Trey literally was, like, I want to build this ramp to where just riding it is, like, doing a trick. Like, if you can just ride the <laughs> ramp in general, like, you you just did a trick. That's I mean, I've never ridden it, but that's how it looks. I was talking yeah, to Sam tight. from Shadow, and he was down there recently, and he was, like, yeah. Dude, you got to get down there and ride those ramps. Dude, like, anytime, like hit us up. It is dude, I don't know if I could. Like, it looks it's so good. Hard. It, it looks fun. It's but. scary looking, but like once you figure out, like it's one of those ramps where you're like, okay, I have to go there, go there, go there. Okay. 
Okay, go. And then then, like, so then cool. you have to plan it all out because it's like a pool. We always say it's kind of like riding a pool. Then yeah, like just because quick around. transition and Super like everything's tight. tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, you guys make those things. Yeah, look Trey. Way too I mean, good. Trey's built both those ramps, and he's super good at building ramps yeah so. a mad was, man. It, was it trey's ramp or big boy's ramp where they dropped in on the truck was that big boys dropped in. oh no 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 that was so big boy big boy actually owns a property yeah. um out in like the countryside um and we built a bunch of concrete stuff out there within mm. the past like two years and that was day uh my buddy dave mcdermott he's right for uh scavenger and animal uh, he was going down the sub box on his truck. Or was, whatever. Yeah. You guys oh got. I just put, pulled that put, up on put, Instagram. Put the clip. Yeah. Yeah, put the clip in here. I was like, like ripped the bed off. I was like, I thought he was going to destroy the sub box. I was like, oh my god. No. That's insane, dude. But that's, that's is that, that weirdo that, world is where yeah, that's that, at. Yeah, that's that's weirdo okay. world. So that's that's big boys. Uh, that's big boys property, and we like done some of the YouTube videos out there and stuff. But like we did it to where like. Uh, he does uh, sells merch on his uh, YouTube channel, and like so, like every single ramp out there is literally from people just like buying shirts and contributing to the, to oh, the yard so and stuff, rad. and Damn. it's so sick. But uh, we just got some uh, a bunch of free wood from this skate park called uh, Stone Edge that's closing down, so we're gonna build a bunch of other cool like wood shit out there. So, oh, that's gonna be Because we ran dope. we ran into some stuff with like the um, like the city with like <laughs> building things like permitted and stuff like and that. Stuff. So they're like, just don't build anything new. Mm. So we're like, oh, we'll do wood maybe. <laughs> be better. So, yeah. Oh, but yeah, so. that's tough, man. Yeah, dealing with but, the cities and permitting and stuff like that. Yeah, but. it's funny that like riding in Florida, like we're always like, we don't have anything, we don't have anything, and then like people will come into town, like from out of town, we're like, oh, like. They took them all these spots. Like, I guess we do have some stuff mm-hmm. here. Like, because sometimes it takes people that are don't ride it all the time to come and show you shit. Give you that, that perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, exactly. even just like the backyard ramp thing. Like, we live in Colorado. Like, that doesn't really exist here because we have so many skate parks, right? Like, there's a few that have popped up over the years, yeah. but like nothing that's like extremely notable, like what yeah. you guys have. So it's yeah, it's funny to just see those differences. So and I. I I was going to say, like, I see it in mountain biking all the time. Like, the more spots there is, the more spread out the scene is, where mm-hmm. I think you guys have such a cool thing. It's like, yeah, you have, you know, these backyard ramps popping up. You are doing these DIY spots. And mm-hmm. I think it curates a very tight scene, Yeah, which I feel like Colorado lacks at times because mm-hmm. there's, you know, 150 skate parks. Everyone's kind of in their They're own. It's like two out. or, yeah. you know, five riders. And you don't have those, like, big days where it's like, there's you know, like 10 people at the skate park. It's hammer, like, yeah. There's so many skate parks to go to. You guys yeah, our are scenes are so kind of much thing. more spread out. Like you go to, you know, Boulder Skate Park, there's a little bit of a scene there. But everywhere else, yeah. there's like... Or a D park or something like that. Mm-hmm. Like, but for the most part, like the scenes are so segmented because of yeah. the, you know, amount of stuff we have to ride. Yeah, it's so. the microcultures around. Yeah. But do you see this uh, with all having those kind of different backyard kind of vibes and stuff? stuff that you're not going to see like at your everyday skate park right do you see that like building so much better for like filming and that kind of stuff and projects or is it more just like um this is dope to ride and i mean trey's filmed a couple things on his ramp um big boys filmed a couple things on his ramp i mean it's not like i mean we've we've filmed so many youtube videos and so many instagram clips on stuff that it's like it's not really anything that like, we can like film. Cl- I mean, we could. Like, yeah, we could there's definitely yeah. gnarly shit that, in the backyard that we've always talked about. Yeah. It's like, hard, I feel like, when you are creating content for like Instagram and YouTube, then to back that up with a gnarly yeah, clip. Yeah, because you want to like, get clips for that, and then you're just like, oh, damn, like, what is actually like a clip clip totally. like, in the backyard? So, yeah. But uh, it, there's definitely some things we've looked at that we want to do. But I mean, Trey got some really cool clips for Colt, um, another Colt video that's coming out. Um, Big boy's been filming stuff. We're doing a full length video, like oh, all of our homies. Sick. So, oh hell yeah! So we've been filming. Is it just a like a Florida cool scene type. Video? Yeah, so it's gonna be uh, me, Trey, Big Boy, and Marcel and Dave. Cool. So oh, we're I'm all excited gonna, for so, that. But like, it's funny because like, uh, it's like the first ever full full length we ever did together. Oh wow! So we're like, we're gonna give it like over a year. Like we're definitely gonna oh. wait like over a year and make it like a legit full length like video Dude, that's so cool that's huge but, yeah. it's it's rad to see more of those like coming back because like growing up i remember watching a lot longer videos and stuff and now with the social media and everything and our attention spans you see more of these like 30 second clips two minute reels. edits reels TikToks. everything tiktoks <laughs> you see the dances you know yeah. so but yeah it's, it's rad to see people talking about that because in the mountain bike industry people are talking about yeah let's put together a 45 minute 50 mm-hmm. minute video you know and it's 
I think that it speaks to a certain level if you can keep the viewer's attention mm -hmm. over that period with bangers and with just like sick clips, yep. sick riding and stuff. And as opposed to something that's like, holy shit, this thing is an hour long. And yeah, I mean, I for just... me, like I prefer the longer format stuff. And like when it is a good video, like, you know, the fast and loose pullback or die, mm -hmm. like that's what, 50 minutes long or something. Yeah. And like you get to the end of it and you're just like, I want more of that, yeah, you know? know, like you want yeah. it to be two uh -huh. hours long. Uh -huh. like. So for you, like, do you prefer like the longer stuff or like the web videos or are you impartial? I'm, I, I like it all. I yeah, mean, honestly, yeah. like, I mean, I've, I mean, I'm, we're talking my era, my era of BMX, like my, my etnies forward is talk is cheap and oh, what yeah. can go wrong. Like that's my like first videos I have ever watched were those videos. And so like, I hold a specific place in my heart for full length videos, yep. but I know like a lot of new writing, it's all about reels. It's all about getting Instagram clips, all about being relevant, like all about that. But I definitely hold a higher standard for like edits and like, I mean, like I did like some of the source battle, the brand stuff, mm -hmm. like doing trips like that was really cool. Like doing edits like that is really cool. But I definitely like, I mean, I don't know. Like it, I, I, I feel like you have to be well versed in everything nowadays, like mm -hmm. to be, relevant yeah. like which is like it's such a tough thing to battle because like a decade ago that didn't exist exactly you know? yeah like having to uh, balance yeah. like being a good like contest writer then yeah. also being like a good film writer and yeah. then like be able to produce the instagram clips definitely like, takes more like mental like work to yeah. think of like is this really an instagram clip or is this an actual clip or is this an edit clip totally or is this a homie uh, oh yeah homie, which, like, which bucket to drop yeah it in? like to yeah. drop it into because like i mean everyone has their standards of their clip but it's like you got to be smart and be like okay i already have this many clips that are like this in this video i should probably put it towards this or yeah. you know i already filmed so many clips like this i should just save it and just post it on instagram one day like or, it's or too like much of a banger it's yeah. so it's ridiculous how it's much it's a like, game of chess is kind to it. Of. No, I mean, like, maybe I'm overanalyzing it, yeah. but I know, no, I, think, I know some people think that way, too. I but. think that's the move, though, because, like, I mean, you see so many people who are insanely good yeah. and talented bike riders, and nobody knows who they are because they're not playing that game. You know, yeah. they just show up and ride bikes, and, like, there's something beautiful to that, too, but it's also tough when it's, like... Dude, you could be so like huge in this industry, like yeah. But they just don't care. But that's so. some of the best things is like when when people are super good and they literally only contribute themselves to like like homie parts and yep. stuff like that. Like that's some of the best videos I've ever seen have been people that are under the radar. Yeah, like because well, there's I mean? just like, so much soul involved, right? Yeah. Like, and they're not just worried about getting views and being recognized. It's like I feel like nowadays, like if you want to be a relevant like. BMX rider and you want to be able to go like pro or get on get sponsored it's like you do have to have an Instagram like like presence in some way that way people can find out who you are yep. then you can post about the edits that you're dropping and the full links that you're doing it's like then because then it's just word of mouth you For know sure. what I mean but I mean like if you're cool with word of mouth then that's cool too like but it's also not 2008 anymore yeah. like, <laughs> well so. I feel like the BM, it seems like the BMX community and I'm an outsider to it um, but it definitely does there are there's still that space though for those people mm -hmm. that are out there and they're just there like is. I don't give a fuck about Instagram social media I just want to ride my bike yeah. and then when the Which film is, is out there or the photographer's out there magic happens and that's dope and that, that that's a, a romance in itself right mm -hmm. because that when you hear somebody's part like oh so and so's got a part in this video you're just like oh this is gonna yeah, be you special because yeah, you haven't seen him in a while because you haven't seen him in a while right but I do think that yeah to build on to like being able to uh, make it so that you can ride a bike for a living or whatever mm -hmm. it is having to have that forethought yeah. about which where is those clips, dumb but which it's is like, it's insane, I, I, I hate yeah. how it has to be that way but yeah it's, like, it's all part of the game though right yeah. <sighs> So for you, like, I've always enjoyed your Instagram clips. So do you, like, go out with the intention of, like, hey, we're filming for Instagram today? Or is it nah, just, like, I, nah, it's just, just comes it's just out whatever it comes happens. out? Like, yeah. I mean, there's definitely some times where, like, I, whether it be us riding the backyard ramp or just out in the streets or whatever, like, I'll just see something. And, like, I mean, honestly, like, most of the time, I mean, I own up to this, but my brother it inspires me all the time he's inspired me ever since i was a little kid that's so you know cool. what i mean but like but like he's like he almost knows my capabilities better than like myself sometimes mm -hmm. and he's like that's cool but don't do that do this instead and i'm like really he's like he's like i think that'd be sick and i'm like hmm 
and I look at it and I do it and I'm like, hmm, actually, yeah, you're right. It was actually way better than what I was thinking of That's before. So, cool. so like sometimes it's like we're in the backyard and I'm trying something and it, it, I end up filming an Instagram clip or, or I lose my mind right. trying one and I'm like, fuck it. I don't want to do this <laughs> yeah, anymore. Totally. Like what, what's this worth? Like for some stupid views, like, <laughs> yeah. you know some what I mean? Likes. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. So it's just, it's kind of just whatever. Yeah. That's happens. sick though like, that you have like Trey to lean on for that, like creative. Yeah. Creativity I mean, it's too. all, it's everyone. I mean like Marcel too. Mm-hmm. Like I read with Marcel a lot and he, he, he always is telling me stuff like that. Like I always have to, I, I always enjoy asking people like, yeah. Oh, yeah. is this cool? Like, do you think this is sick or should I do this? Like, which is like, I know some people would be like, no, fuck that. Like, just do whatever you want to do. But yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I enjoy people's input. Yeah, like, I yeah. enjoy people's like comments. Like, you want people yeah. to enjoy what you're yeah, enjoying. Yeah, exactly. Right? So like, and it, I enjoy it more when people enjoy it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is, it's, but that's, that's like, a selfless way of doing it. But like, yeah, <laughs> but they're giving you like, just like a little artistic flair. Like you already have what you've, you know, the vision built. of what I want to do. They're just tweaking, they're tweaking it, it, you yeah. know, a little bit. And yeah. I'm glad you touched base on Trey. Cause for people that haven't seen you ride, like, I feel like I'm always watching you climb on some roof doing some <laughs> wild like can lander or like this weird foot plant combo like you just have this like wild riding style and yeah. obviously trey influenced that and i was gonna ask like, oh for sure who else like are the main influences growing up that inspired you to like i don't know make jabe jones jabe jones i mean i don't know like i always i mean i was we were always friends with like all the band guys yeah so like i mean i grew up watching all the band videos all the bone death videos like all that stuff so like I think from, like, when I turned, like, when I was, like, 15, I like, found out, I was, like, oh, shit, like, I can write off stuff. Like, <laughs> and it's fun because it's, like, easy to do. It's not, like, a trick. And uh, all the can-can stuff, that was, like, that was kind of, like, a phase. Like, yeah, yeah. that was just, like, me, like, being younger and being, like, what's something I can do that's something different? different like, that yeah. No one does it. And then, like, looking back on it, I'm, like, uh, like I, I, I think, I mean, I did a can-can rider off a roof one time, which is, like, to wow. me, I was, like, I was, like, I, was, like, I wouldn't do that again. Yeah, like, like it, it's goofy to me, but it's also like I wouldn't do that again. It's scary. Yeah, like, that's gnarly. But like some of the things I did, like fat, like some of the can can rider stuff, I, I, I don't like. Yeah. <laughs> but the fat, fast, it's like hindsight. sometimes I'll be in a skate park and I'm like, yo, check it out, yeah. uh, chosen fifteen yeah. trick <laughs> or whatever, and I'll do some kind of fast plant thing yeah. or whatever, like as a joke. That is but. cool though to see how your writing has evolved over the years. Like from yeah. that, like you say, that was a phase, but it's like mm-hmm. it's built you into the writer that you are now. But yeah, it's a, definitely a product of like my environment. Like as I've grown older, I've gotten new homies, and you know, and and alternated, and I, I put a free coaster on. I think when I was like seventeen or eighteen or something like that, and like I didn't put yeah, I didn't put a free coaster on until then. Yeah. Wow. And so like, but. F- all the way up to that point, I'd always wanted to, but I never did because everyone rode one. And I was like, you know what? Like, I actually enjoy riding it, so yeah. fuck it, I'll do it. And that's when, like, now I do a lot of backlashes, and I really like doing stuff like that and fakie yeah. manuals. And it's like, so it's just, it's just gone. Yeah. Like, whatever I wanted to do, it just turned out that way, I that's guess. Sad. I don't know. Like, but I think that's like any kind of artist, like as as you progress as an artist, like as a rider, mm-hmm. yeah, your different influences are definitely going to mm-hmm. like make you who you are, like Mike's saying. It's like, yeah, those small details make the bigger yeah. sum, which is super cool. It's all, yeah. we were, me and Trey are always saying, like, oh, it's so funny, like when you, uh, like you, depending who you go out with is what you're going to be riding like mm-hmm. that day, sometimes. Like, so it's like, for instance, like we were hanging out with Corey and Jason and all the Fast and Loose guys. And so we were all riding a lot of transition. And so like, we were all like, we were all trying to like, you know, like ride like more transition stuff. And then it's like, I'll go out and ride with like Dave McDermott or like some other like crusty, like street people yeah. or whatever. And I'm <laughs> like, I'm like street. doing like, you know, but then we're all doing like peg chinks and grinding on like gnarly stuff or whatever. And it's like, just, I feel like I'm a product of my environment. Yeah, well, no. I don't think I'm really like, I don't, I mean, I think the only time I really feel like I'm like truly doing something that I want to do or doing, not, that's not the right word, doing something that is like truly coming from my creative input is when I'm literally just like in a flow state with like the people, like my brother and like Marcel and Big Mm -hmm. Boy, like people that I don't feel like I have to like, not perform in front of, but like ride a certain way yeah like, you like know? I don't bring know. the like, same energy to the session yeah. that they're bringing i've always felt that I don't, I don't know why i've always felt that way like, yeah i had to ride a certain way but i think it's cool too that you like 
what you're talking about because it makes you not just like a street rider you know like that's your primary yeah. stuff that you ride but you're you that whole crew that you yeah, ride with florida though in yeah. general like florida in general like you ride a little bit of everything yeah you're just a bike rider you're yeah. a bmx rider and i think that's really cool that's something that gets lost among a lot of people i think is that people are just like i only ride dirt or i only ride park or yeah. i only yeah. ride street and it's but like but then if that's what you like that's yeah, what you like you totally. know what i mean so like but, but they get so segmented in those categories, yeah. you know, it's like, dude, yeah. you can pull a little bit. And like, I think yeah. that's why you have the style you have, or Trey has the style he has. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember like watching like old Trey clips and like just mm-hmm. being like a park rat and like, it's so wild yeah, and to me. Yeah, he had me. pegs and a free coaster on. And, yeah, it's yeah. so wild, dude. And it's but it all cool to see the progression, you know? But yeah, like his influence of like being part of 71 North and all that stuff, like he always says like, that's where I pretty much became who I am and yeah. like from being there, you know what I mean? And you know, but, that's uh, so cool. When, uh, when did you guys start riding bikes? BMX? I mean, I, I was predisposed to be a bike rider <laughs> because my brother started before me, but, uh, he, so we're seven years apart. So I literally was born into it. Like as soon as he got his training wheels off, he was jumping stuff. Okay. Um, same thing with me. I got my training wheels off at two and we were, I was just, as soon as I was born, I just went, automatically going to the skate park with my brother right. and my dad like that's my cool. tray raced um i didn't really race because by the time i was around he was already just going to skate parks wasn't racing anymore so i grew up going to mission and mesh and all that stuff i remember going, i i i have like very vivid memories of being in those places even though i was like so young like i remember being like eight years old at bako jam and, oh like, that's cool watching like all these heavy heavy hitters like being there and like just the parties, like, I remember it, like, very vividly, and, like, even riding Mission, like, such, like, a OG park that was in so many awesome videos, you know what I mean? Like, I'm very fortunate to say that I do remember being there, you know what I mean? Like, I just wish I was older to where I could, like, actually have (laughs) rode what I wanted to ride there. Yeah, Yeah. like, I think I did my first ever 270 at Mesh or something like that, and a couple other things, but, yeah, man, like, being a part of there has been so sick that's so cool did your was your dad a bmx rider he was more of a surfer okay. but he um i mean he he raced back in the day and like rode bikes too like when he was younger or whatever but like as he got older he was like more of like a surfer okay but like when we got predisposed to liking bikes he was like that's cool like i like bikes too like we let's do bikes and so uh he was always like i wish i wish my kids would turn out to be surfers or whatever <laughs> and I'm like uh, i don't know but, uh, yeah, he, he was super supportive, like, drove us to skate park every single day. He would wake up at wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning, go to work, get off work at, like, 5 or 6, and then drive us to the skate park and be, at, be with us at the skate park until 10 o'clock at wow. night. Wow. Like, like almost, almost every day. Yeah. He fully committed himself to all of us. That's so, so cool, man. That's but, so yeah, rad. We had the support for sure. I guess, yeah, since we're kind of on the topic of being younger, getting into bikes, what what is your favorite childhood memory? It doesn't have to be BMX related, but just like overall. Favorite childhood yeah. memory? Oh, my God. Dig deep. Because you're going to offend somebody if you don't say something somebody else wants to hear. <laughs> um, that one time I went higher than Trey. <laughs> First time it happened. Um, shit, dude. Um, I mean... I've rode BMX since I was like 12 years old. So like, I think some of my best memories were definitely when I was like probably 12, 13, like that era of like riding or whatever. Ah, dude, there's so many, um, just to choose one. <laughs> it's hard. <man. laughs> I can't, Put, man. Putting I don't you on know. the spot. Yeah. Um, it's a tough question. Yeah. yeah it's a yeah. hard one. I mean, yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, I mean, if we're into it, what's your favorite childhood? My, my I can favorite think, childhood. I can think about it, but you yeah, guys, yeah, I don't. I, that's I don't what I'm know. saying. It's a tough question. I, I would like, probably have to say like walking over the starting hill at the BMX racetrack uh, when yeah. I was a kid. Like that's yeah. probably my favorite one, just because it's like stands out to me so much uh-huh. of like looking at the track and being like, "Whoa, this is like a real thing." Like uh, this is Disneyland for bikes, you know? Yeah. yeah. So something like that for me. But, and then that was also like when you were kind of come into age and you had shit going on at home or whatever and you're like that was kind of like your relief yeah, that a was nice your like way outlet yeah, yeah your outlet you know so well, cheers mine oh mine. mine's easy <laughs> <laughs> Oof. when i first learned because i was a bit of a computer geek when i first learned about like getting on the internet i was one of the only people like in my town i grew up in a small town in england mm-hmm. and then uh about 95 and then i learned uh, what porn was 
<laughs> oh my god! I thought that was pretty much one of the <laughs> the best days and the worst days of my life. Yeah. <laughs> the rest of my teenage years, I don't really remember too much yeah. of. It was all blur. It, it was, was all a blur. After it was that, blur. it stalled down here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then finding that perfect uh, picture, and then trying to refind it again. Yeah. Yacht, so <laughs> you, you, you put some Jesus, thought into that Jesus one. Christ. So <laughs> James finds porn in 1995. Yada yada yada. As life goes down, they had hill, the internet back then, and he finds. Yeah. Yeah. Himself in this dark room doing this damn podcast, <laughs> and now we're here. And now we're here. <laughs> what? Thirty years, almost thirty years later. Goodness, um, cannot be. Um, Mine's my easy. Maths off on that. What's yours? Favorite childhood memory? When I found my perfect MySpace song, Ooh. the first one. Oh, don't even get me started. Did you have a MySpace? I did not have a MySpace. Okay, I was like, he's my too, time. too young yeah. for that. I yeah. remember it, but yeah. I didn't have one. I think my first thing was like a Facebook. Account. Yeah, heck yeah. yeah. All right, Facebook. Um, that was like that was like 2010. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I was like about to graduate high school when like Facebook started getting cool. Yeah, which is kind of funny. See, I had Facebook when I was in college, like yeah. when it was legit for college, you know. Yeah. So I was like a wee bit too old for MySpace, and <laughs> yeah, Facebook yeah, because you used to have like a you used to have to have a dot edu email to like be on Facebook. Oh yeah, which is so funny to think of. It was like the original Tinder, which yeah, is kind of crazy so to good. think about. But. Isn't that what it was like started for? Wasn't yeah, it? like yeah. a dating oh, profile. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for it's like sure. A hot or not type yeah, of hot, yeah. or not, hot or not. That's yeah, what it was. That's what it was okay, that's yeah. what I thought. That's yeah. for the movie. That's what yeah. the movie in my head. That's Before so we get fun. too deep, because we went down <laughs> such a rabbit hole of like what you know, MySpace songs and stuff. I'm gonna jump. We were talking about like 12, 13, your childhood. I want to jump up forward a couple years and talk actually, about... I have a memory. Oh, oh what oh, do we yeah, got? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, I have a memory. It just Sick. popped in my head. It, it just po- yeah. Um, so mesh closed. I think in like 2000 or something like 2009 or something like that um so it was abandoned and it was there um most of the ramps were in there and uh eventually like a couple years later probably like four or five years later people were going back and riding in like fixing up ramps and like riding the ramps in the abandoned warehouse oh, that's whatever. Sick. but cops would pull up and shit all the time and i remember i was like probably 13 14 maybe uh, and it was really cold one morning, and we had this idea. I was staying at my friend's house. It was like me, uh, it's me, my buddy Seth, my buddy Alex, and we had this idea that we were gonna pedal to Mesh, which was like probably like an hour pedal. <laughs> it was like oh. it was far, but we couldn't drive or anything. And we're like, fuck it, we're gonna wake up at like six a.m. and we're gonna get there and we're gonna ride it. And we pedaled like it was so cold, and we got there and we like opened up like one of the draw doors, and it was like the street course was still there. Like the whole street side was still there. Wow. All these rails and ledges. And we were just like, oh my, cause I had been, I, I mean, I remember going there when I was a kid, but like I had like a little bit of a lull when I was like probably like 10 to like 12 where I didn't really ride at all. I did like normal kids shit. I did like sports and stuff. Okay. So when I opened up that door, I was like, holy shit. Like I'm back. Like, oh, I, that's like, so cool. that's, like, like, reignited like the yeah, fighter. like, like, I remember coming here when Just I was like a little, little kid, but I didn't appreciate it as much when I was a little kid. And then now that like I had been riding more with my friends, I was like, holy shit, like that's this so place cool. is so awesome. Like I I took it for Dude, granted so like when cool. I was younger, but that was a good memory for sure. That's a solid one. I like that. Yeah. yeah Just but, like, yeah. Kind of like you know, bad boy. It's like you yeah, wait for the cops we're like, to come. Yeah, we were like waiting for cops, and we were all stressing out because we thought we were gonna go to jail. And it's really just especially like, at that age, kids you're just that. like, uh, yeah, I'm scared arrested, of everything. Yeah. My life will be over. <laughs> when was that? 2014 ish. When you think? Yeah, it was? that was probably like 14. Yeah, because I couldn't drive yet or anything. So so. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, it seemed like 2016 to 19 is like when you kind of came into your own on the bike. Like 2016, welcome to Shadow Family, right? Mm-hmm. You drop that. And then the next year, Shadow AM team, you know, mm-hmm. you drop a video. And then the next year, welcome to Sabrosa. Mm-hmm. It just seems like your riding style is like blossoming. You're kind of yeah becoming a professional rider. Like how impactful. That's during your high school years. You're working at Sparky's, right? Like, yeah, tell I me was, about that so era. I was, but I was a... Uh... So I was working in the warehouse at Sparky's like yeah. during that time. Um, but I mean, I, ever since I was 13, like I was like, I'm going to be a professional BMX rider. Yeah. Like, what that's, what that's brought what you that's, back that's, at 12? You said you had that. I think, I think I in? just started having like friends, like I started just having friends that were showing interest in extreme shit, like skating and surfing and BMX or whatever. And so I remember like we had an era, we were like straight up rocket power. We had like we had we we were going to the beach, going surfing. We yeah. had we had skateboards, we had bikes, but then eventually it progressed to all of us getting bikes and like 
I had like a Colt Complete and all this stuff that I got from Robbie and like it was kind of like one of those things that like my friends were getting into it but I already knew how to do it and I was like oh like I know how to, I know how to do this like I'm like Trey, Trey will tell you like Trey says this all the time but like it's like I that was I didn't really care about it until it was like my friends like my time hanging out my time yeah. riding they like, like validated the thing like, that you yeah, were into it, like that was the true origin like I was just brought into it when I was younger but it's like around that era is when I fully was like, I'm with the homies, we're going and riding the street, we're jumping off curves, we're trying to learn 180s, like, that was that era. Oh, that's for cool. For sure, but then it, like, then it progressed, and um, I got more and more serious about it, like, around, like, 14 is when I really was, like, wanting to learn, like, everything I could, like, as far as tricks go and yeah. stuff like that, and probably 13, 14 is when I learned, like, the most amount of my tricks or whatever but i was never like you know like, m- like kids nowadays it's like they get a bike like i want to learn how to bar spin yep. and tail up and you're just like that don't work that way yeah. man like yeah. like you gotta learn how to bunny hop then you gotta learn how to 180 then you gotta learn how to do a 360 then you gotta learn how to do a little like style like tabletop and <laughs> yeah. then you can move on from there but it's like so i kind of learned that way because like that's how trey kind of like carried me along that's you know cool. But, like, all my friends were like, they wanted to learn bar spin, so I wanted to learn, learn all that stuff, and I never had any interest in learning that kind of stuff. So, like, I just learned other tricks, like fast plants and topside can-cans and, um, I don't know, like, I was, I'm was i a big fan of the feeble grind. Uh, I mean, that's pretty much, like, all the only grind I really do, honestly. <laughs> you one off the rooftop, like the double feeble, where you feeble onto the roof uh, yeah. and then I'll never, do, I'll never do that again so <laughs> yeah. i was just that was me running on pure hype i think i got a clip before that and i was didn't like, you loop on out on the hype. first one uh or like blew off the back no that was another feeble uh, i did okay. so gnarly, um, dude but yeah so like i like um yeah just kind of grew into like did, i had the fast plant era and can can era and all that stuff and then uh I mean, honestly, like, I mean, I own, I know, I own up to it. So Sean Rickany started coming around a lot, uh, like when I was like probably sixteen, seventeen. Was he or coming out to ride with like Trey or? Was yeah, he just yeah, kinda... yeah. Because we've always been friends with him or whatever, yeah. and um, he he came was coming to Florida a lot, hanging out with us or whatever, and like Sean really influenced like as far as like my style goes, like, because he's he's the homie, he's he's sick, and so like I like uh I like really like enjoyed like finding out like my style through like he would send me further stuff and all that stuff and i own up to that like i <laughs> i own up to it that i'd probably dress like them a lot during that era because <laughs> i was 17 i didn't really know shit and so i was like learning that and so like around that era i that's when i started getting free coaster and then that's when i left i think i left fbm in 20 i want to say 2018 or no 2017 i left fbm and i started riding for Sabrosa. Um, and, uh, then that, they kind of changed everything. I had like two metal pegs or I had three metal pegs and a free coaster and I rode a Sabrosa and, uh, then the three pegs kind of fell off for a little bit and then there's just two pegs and a free coaster and I kind of just stuck with that from oh, that's cool. that point on and then I learned, uh, a lot, of, a lot more like backlash stuff, a lot more like techie newer tricks or whatever. I tried like, but I mean, I feel like I still do like basic normal bmx tricks yeah. like i don't like you know i'm not i'm not trying truck drivers or anything like i i i have done them like just fucking around like just trying to learn yeah. like barsman's and tail but it's and like shit. not your thing yeah and i was doing a lot of tail ups for a while and um i don't know why i just stopped doing them and i lost yeah. them like that's the way that that kind of shit works yeah like, you if you're not doing, doing them, it you all the time them. oh yeah well i think there's something cool too like about having that style of like simplicity you know, like less is more in a lot of cases, and yeah. especially with BMX anymore. Like so many people are doing such gnarly stuff and mm-hmm. it's cool, but it's almost overwhelming because like the simplicity is like removed from it, you know, and I, I personally wow. love watching like very simple stuff done very well, mm-hmm. you know, because yeah. like that's almost harder to do than like a triple yeah. truck, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, yeah, look at like the snowboard in, or any industry, mm-hmm. you know, but snowboard, it's like on the half pipe, all the gymnastics. It's amazing. It's absolutely beautiful, but there's nothing better than a method. Yeah. So yeah. Like super like a massive tweaked method. out method. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you're like, oh, yeah. that's beautiful. I'll take, I'll watch that all day all long. All day long. Yeah. yeah. So definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So I that's agree. cool. I agree for sure. Um, going back to those video parts, is there a time that you can think back on and you're like, this feels real. Like I'm a professional writer. Um, was it, you know, getting on the shadow am team, the welcome to Sprosa? Was um, there like a pinnacle moment that you're just like, this is it like i'm i'm doing what i've always wanted to do the dream is alive 
Um, I mean, I, I, feel, I feel that I feel that way now, and I'm not even a professional BMX rider. Yeah, yeah. Like, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, I feel like, I mean, I feel like being a ham rider is just as good as being a pro. I yeah. mean, obviously, it'd be nice to get paid, but, like, I don't know. Like, yeah. I still get to, get to go and hang out with the homies, like, yeah. all on the team. Like, that's the cool thing about Shadow and Sabrosa. There's no, like, really divide between, yeah. like, ham rider and, like, yeah. it's, like, it's, like, we're all cool. Like, everybody's part of the same no, there's family. No, there's no, like, pros that are, like, oh, I'm not going to hang out with the ham riders, like, because they're less, like. I already feel like a part of the team, like because yeah. you know I've known Simo and all those guys since I was like a little kid, so it's like they're just like my friends or whatever. But like around yeah. like probably like eighteen is where like I you know I got on Sabrosa, or like I was on Sabrosa and I was on Shadow Am team, and then I dropped that video, and uh, it was like a, one of the first videos that I was like, holy shit, like this turned out exactly the way I wanted it to be. Like, exactly. And I did some of the most scariest shit, like, for that video. I was also 18, and I was in high school, and I had nothing to fucking worry about. And, like, <laughs> no, no bills. Like, yeah, nothing. no bills. Like, you know, just just running on my parents' it's, health insurance. Yeah. Like, who gives a shit? Like, That's the best era, you know? When yeah. You, like, and, have no responsibility. Yeah, and I, uh, I hadn't broken anything yet. I hadn't done any kind of, like... I don't know, any, like, serious injury at all, you know what I mean? And so, like, I just was, like, on a different planet as far as mentally. Like, mentally, like, I just was, like, I had so much more balls then than I do now, for sure. Probably around that era is, like, when I feel like I was, like, the most in it as far as, like, sending it for the brands and, like, going on the trips or whatever. And I did, like, um, I went to Barcelona with Bajarki. I went to Iceland that year. Like, it was all after I graduated high school. school. I was, like, like, I'm going to go. I'm gonna go to Europe. And I'm gonna do all the the big boy like uh, street rider shit, like go, like traveling to Europe and stuff like that. Because I hadn't really traveled to Europe other than Hastings, just for Battle Hastings. And so we did like Iceland and Spain and France and all that stuff. And when I came back, that's when I was like, "Holy shit! Like, did I want to do this shit? Like, this shit is sick." Like, How do I do this forever? Yeah, but it's like then I came back and started college and all that shit and then responsibilities started like flooding in it's a little bit harder to <laughs> mentally you block down. yourself yeah. out to yeah. send some shit whenever you get all these things on your plate so totally. that, that video dropped when you were 18 mm-hmm. what like um something that i notice a lot of is when we drop a video or a photo shoot or something like that for better or worse looking at the comments which i hate to do on anything but that's it's part of our industry part of our yeah. life now at 18, how long ago was that? That was... I'm 22. Four, I'm 22 four years. Now, so like four, four years ago. Yeah, so were you looking... Was there... Were you listening to any... Was there any negative backlash? Were you listening to that? How did that... I never looked at it once. Never looked at it. Because it was on... It was on like Sabrosa's YouTube. Or yeah. Whatever. yeah. It wasn't like it was posting on my YouTube. So you weren't getting the notifications. And I wasn't looking at it or whatever. Um, and I... It's even... Even when it comes to like the the comments or whatever like i never really give a shit about like any of the negative comments i always give a shit about the people who i respect the most commenting on yeah them. yes okay some positive sick. shit like yeah. like dave crone like i fucking love his writing he's probably one of my favorite writers and when he comments on an instagram post of mine i'm like holy shit like i can't believe you just commented that's on so shit. cool yeah. it's like that's me being a fanboy but like that's just that's my inner 13 year old being like holy shit like it's a duty to watch and talk as cheap, like that's so over right. and over and over that's again, like dope. commenting on my shit. Like I focus more on that rather than like someone being like, his style is whack, yeah. blah, blah, or blah, he, blah. he shouldn't be whatever, or, or all yeah. the team weed posts or yeah. whatever. Like I never like, I don't like. That's yeah, hard. You don't know if that person can even bunny hop. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Just, like, and you're just like, off I, I'm day. just like, yeah. you're not worth yeah. it. Yeah. You're like, like who you know are you? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, with that being said, has there ever been a negative comment that you've seen that you're like, that's actually a compliment. Thank you. <laughs> um I don't know. I I I kind of like I kind of almost like people being like he ain't shit or whatever yeah. cuz I'm like you're right. I ain't shit. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But like I don't really give a fuck. Yeah. Like I mean, there's definitely been times where someone's like he's only on the team because of his brother and I'm like you're right. I probably <laughs> am on the team only because of my brother because guess what? I wouldn't have known Ronnie. Yeah. I wouldn't have known Ryan. I wouldn't have known any of these guys. Like that's well, probably correct, yeah. and I own up to that. I don't give a shit. But, like, at the end of the day, I'm the one that fucking busted my ass riding yeah. my bike, and they're the ones that recognized me to do that. Yep. Yep. Yeah, he kind of just opened the door, yeah, probably. Yeah, it, it was literally just, like, as if, like, let's say you started a bike company, yep. and, like, my I had a kid, and that kid started crushing it, and you saw it. The only reason why you know that is because you know me. Yep. Yep. It's like, 
I don't well, blame the fucking kid. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's like a hard thing to have perspective on. Like, I never really had that perspective of like, it's who you know until mm-hmm. I got a little older. And like, especially now, the like world. owning mm-hmm. traction. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I see that other side now when like kids send us a message and they're like, will you sponsor me? And I'm like, dude, I have no idea who you are. <laughs> but like when it's somebody that we know and they like come hang out, it's like, yeah, dude, like we'll hook you up. You yeah. know, like it's like a weird, like, yeah, it is all about who you know. And like, you have to know that somebody's a good person. Like if, if you didn't have that intro from Trey to Ronnie and Ronnie would be like, who is this yeah, kid? Which is what like a lot of, like a lot of like uh writers starting out, they don't like, they don't know that. Yeah. Like, they just think like, well, I'm really good on a bike. Yep. So why am I not sponsors? And okay. it's like, dude, you have no idea. That's like, that's literally maybe like a 30% of like what it actually is about. Like, totally. You know what I mean? Like, obviously, yeah, things have changed. And like with Instagram, like people just people just blow up for no reason just because they're really fucking good on the bike and they just want to send them parts and get a promotion through their Instagram or whatever if they're already blowing up. But it's like to be on a team is different. Yep. Like you got to make sure every single person on the team is like fucking with you and like stoked on you before you're on the team actually. Especially you know when I mean? you're but, like rolling around in a van with everybody. Like yeah, if you have yeah, one bad dude in the van. Kids don't get that. Kids mm-hmm. don't get that. Which is like – that's one thing I, I wish people knew is that like, like I, I'm not the best bike rider, but I know I'm a damn good teammate. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm, I can't do double trucks down stair sets and, you know, do over toothpicks down massive handrails and all this shit. But it's like, I will back you up as a homie on the team yep. and I will promote the fuck out of the company as best as I can. When you're and bringing like, like good energy on those trips, yeah, which like elevates everybody's like, spirits. No one wants to like, be with someone that's a dickhead and yeah, like no. bringing everyone's vibes down. Like no matter how fucking good you are, yeah, like no yeah. one gives a shit how good you are if you're bringing everyone down. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's, that's really good perspective. If you're a young bike rider and you're listening to this, like yeah. really yeah, listen that's to what those it's words. All about. Like, like just enjoy having fun with your homies and just be positive as fuck. And it, you know, if things work out that way, work out that way. Yeah. Like you can't force it. Right. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, I think too, BMX is too small to like blow it up like that and yeah. make it like something not necessary. You know totally. I mean? So, so you talk about talk is cheap being your favorite all time full length, right? Probably. Yeah. Is that and like Dave Crone's a big part of that, but like, were you around when like Trey was filming part like parts of that video? Were, I mean, like, were I mean, you following yeah, around I mean, with that? yeah, I, I didn't ever go on any trips, on any trips or okay. anything. But like, I mean, I remember being like, I remember being like ten years old and like. <laughs> I remember like Robbie and like Dakota like coming and like visiting Trey um and like me like meeting Dakota when I was like 11 years old or something like yeah. that and I remember like I didn't I didn't really ride at the time so I didn't really think about it and then when I was like 12 getting into BMX I'm like fuck I can't really <laughs> Dakota Roach I didn't even really give a shit yeah. like like you know what I mean and so uh but yeah like I remember like um I think Talk is Cheap came out like 2012 I want to say I think it was Sounds like 2012 right. or something yeah. like that um, I never really got to be a, like, be involved in any of that like stuff in the mix or, of or see it. see any of the trips because I don't think they did too many trips to Florida. Yeah. Um, but I remember like, going to that premiere at like the bike shop and I was like, dude, like this is such a sick video. Yeah. And it, it just it's cool. I mean, like I own up to it, man. Like it's cool, like being brothers with someone that's like in, in a part of such a cool thing. Yep. You know what I mean? Because I get so much exposure that most people don't get to get, and it's like I appreciate that, like. I never ever take that for granted, um, but yeah, th- I, that video is pretty much up there. Yeah, I, I, I that's one of my personal favorites as well. We actually so. have it like we have a TV out in the roastery, yeah. and that's like it's Anthem Two or Talk is Cheap. Like, Anthem Two, you yeah, know, like those shit. are the videos. I mean, like yeah. yeah, Anthem Two, Mikey's fire and um, dude, all time. Yeah, dude, all time. The premiere in Austin, I always talk about it, but kept messing it up and it would just replay Mikey's part <laughs> and everyone it was like four times and they're just like just play Mike's part we'll go home because it's so good it's like I mean it is like the video part but yeah. um I mean we talked vi- um, favorite video is there a favorite writer and why would like over the years and why <sighs> favorite writer um I mean yeah Dave Crone's a big part of it um but uh as far as like inspiration and like just like in general, like when they drop a video, I just want to see it. Is Dak like 100% Dak? Like, oh, yeah. And it's like, I mean, I, I own up to it. I definitely use a little bit of his fees and my stuff or whatever. And um, I just like, I really, I, I mean, honestly, most of the tricks that he does, like, I feel like I like watching his videos the most because it's like they're burly and 
it's it's they're technical but like the technicality is like a feasible thing to wrap my head around because he's not doing like truck drivers and all this crazy shit or whatever and it's like it's like a writing that I can really like understand yeah. and like indulge in and like appreciate because like he fucking does some of the craziest roofs. Dude, he's he insane. He does some of the most insane wall rides. Like wall rides are like some of my favorite things. Roofs are some of my favorite things. So like when I watch it, I'm like, dude, I can imagine like doing that. It's probably so scary. Like yeah. like watching his parts, like Native Three or uh, Native Land Three, like dude. that video fully puts me into like a state of like I want to go film now. That's like, sick. I want nice. to go and get clips now because watching this video got me hyped to go and, like, ride. So, that's which, cool. like, if Dax listened to this, like, that's, that's a, I appreciate that a lot in those videos. Well, and I think he's a sick rider, too, because he has a big emphasis on spots. Oh like, my it's God. not just, like, yeah. the trick, but it's, like, Spot a searching, big piece. Like... Like, and that's another thing I think that gets overlooked in, in BMX or skate or anything in general right now. That's this culture. It's, like... People are doing a gnarly trick, and it's like that's cool, but like the spot Where's is the spot also located? like a huge piece of it. What's the journey a part of finding mm-hmm. the spot? Yeah, and I think that's the cool thing about Dak is like he talks about that quite a bit of like the search to find those spots and like all the little things that go into yeah. it, and then like he talks about like what's going through his head when he's you know it's mm-hmm. like it's so cool to have that perspective. Yeah. So yeah. he 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 does crazy shit. He'll drive like so far just into the desert, like and just <laughs> will find like the coolest curve ward or some yeah. cool shit. I'm like, damn, that's like that's commitment. Yeah, for dedication sure. to it. Yeah. Such a gas at the price it is nowadays. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. Yeah. Insane. Yeah, that's a sick yeah, he's sick, dude. Yeah, he's that's badass. so cool. And then do you find yourself leaning more <clears throat> towards wanting to do more filming over contests or like what's your vibe on all that? Um, now that the world's never opening really, back up. never really been a big contest guy. Right. I've been to simple and I've rode in those kind of contests and I've rode in local contests. And it's just like some people love like that nervous, like perform, perform, perform. Mm-hmm. I hate that. Like it's fun being a part of them. Like going to simple was sick because like you're a part of some insane thing, but like you're riding in front of like a shit ton of people. Like I don't know if I could ever handle riding in like. Like a do tour and X Games, I no way. Like I no way. The like, pressure I, has I, to I would be almost immense. probably be like, I can't do this. Like I'm not yeah. gonna do this. Like, but yeah, that pressure. I definitely, has I to definitely be, like mm-hmm. the filming, but it's weird. Like I'm, I'm, I'm nitpicky when it comes to filming. Like, and I, I own up to it. It's like, I, I always see it as like, if I'm trying something and I'm like, I'm like, this is not. It's, if I'm just trying to get a clip, just to get a clip, like, mm-hmm. it's, and it's forced, it never works out the way it's supposed to. Right. Because you're always just, like, you're not doing it for the right reason. You're just doing it just to get the clip rather than being, like, this is going to look sick and I know I can do it is a different thing. Like, that's what I try to, like, tell myself is, like, this is going to look really cool and it's something I really want to do and do it versus me just – I I'm always I always say this, like, I could pull up to a flat ledge spot and I have, like, nothing to do on it than, like, a feeble 180 and, like – probably a smith 180 or something like that and it's like it's like i could try to force something yeah but it's not gonna be like but i definitely enjoy like i'm more of a i always say i'm more of a spot rider like i like the spot being able to dictate what it is like i I want to do rather than showing up to some like generic spot and it's being like okay i have to think okay um, i have these uh, i want to do this and this and this like that doesn't work Uh, it's like i don't i don't like doing that like being able to pull up to a spot and be like i want to do this and i see it right away Mm -hmm. but yeah and do you have like a go-to filmer homie that you you'll call when you find that spot? Or I got a couple people. I mean, like, um, I mean, I always like film with my brother a lot because he can really see things that I can't see, um, and I always know he's gonna, you know, get the clips. But uh, um, I film with the homie uh, Jonah uh, a lot, and he uh, he he's done some videos for Matt and some other people. He did that Lewis um, Lewis video, um, Lewis. Colosseum or how yeah. do you say it? I don't know how to say the last name, name but yeah, that <laughs> video was sick. Yeah. <clears throat> but sorry. Um but yeah, he uh he's a really good filmer and I like filming with him too. Um I've filmed with him since I was like probably like sixteen or something like that. Yeah. Like we started we kinda became like closer homies when I was like probably like seventeen, eighteen and had some parts in like some of his local videos and all that stuff and he's like progressed as a filmer too. Yeah. And um yeah, it's sick film with him and um I mean but Jarky's a good filmer. Um, but I mean, I kind of, I'm down to just film with whoever, Yeah. but th- there's definitely certain times where I'm like, Sigh. like if I'm riding off a roof, like definitely would like Trey to be filming this because he knows like how to make things look really big mm-hmm. and like, 
he, he's filmed so many clips like like that so like he gets like what what it's supposed to look like and he's just got years of experience of the way someone's supposed to look he can so. do it justice yeah. where you're not like see the clip and you're just like oh man i have to go do this again like right. yeah and it's like i mean i i very rarely ever get that and i i, I mean there's no one that I film with really that ever does that, but like I just feel like comfortability wise, like I'm the most comfortable filming with my brother for yeah. sure. How just because I've been like that. For how much does he step you out of your comfort zone at the same time? A lot. He's like you're comfortable, which allows you to like step out of that comfort zone at a the lot. same time because he knows you're riding. Yeah, like, he's always like he's like no, you need to do this, and I'm like I'm like, <laughs> but you trust them. Fuck, you're right. I like, know. And I'm yeah. like, I'm like damn, like okay, like because he, he he gets it. Like he'll always be like. I'll be trying something. I'll be losing my mind. He's like, why are you freaking out? Just do this. Like, you know that you can do that. And I'm like. Oh, like calms you down. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck, you're right. And like, it always ends up being like a screaming match. Like me and him are just like pissy. <laughs> I'm just like pissed at him. And he's just yeah. like, and I, I do it. And he's like, see? And I'm like, fuck, you're right. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like. It's like <laughs> I hate that you're right, but you're right. Yeah. yeah it, it's sick it though because he's your way. brother. So you guys can yell at each other. And like, that's, yeah. that's what makes like, I think stuff even better like we've we get into it a little bit with traction stuff right. and like i think that makes like the in sum a little bit better right when you can like yell at each other and like get the real emotion out and then yeah. the in some true input like, the yeah true, what it's like, really like true honest input is like so yeah. valuable so that's yeah. really cool um i think it's pretty fascinating that you said that you you know at 18 you put that part out and you hadn't like broke a bone or anything like up until that that's yeah. insane like yeah, I was rubber at that point. <laughs> that's so crazy, dude. I was still bailing fine. You did a kneecap in the beginning of COVID year, right? I broke my kneecap. Yeah, like right at the beginning, and then that was like probably like a month or so. Yeah. And then how'd you do that one? I was. We were filming a YouTube video, and I like went to go to this transfer, and I just overshot the shit out of it, oh. and I was like nose diving, and I went to go like kind of bail over. And my like left foot just caught the crossbar and, and just sent my knee like straight to the ground. Oh. And it was like it was like I was like a six foot quarter, six yeah. foot quarter straight to like my kneecap. Damn. And I just thought it just like dead leg the shit out of my knee, like as if you hit your knee on your stem. And uh, it was like the next day, and I'm like, dude, this is not good. Like, and it definitely was broken. Whoa. And then so yeah, so that was a month process. Then got fully back normal, and uh, or I broke my collarbone. When I was like 14, just going to my shoulder. Um, but that was something else. Um, but then like when I fixed my knee, my knee got better. I was in Denver a lot and I was like, I was like oh, dude, there's so many good spots. Like I, I definitely need to like start working on like a no new video because like I hadn't put out a video in a while and I had just, I had been telling myself cause like it had, you know, it's been, had been two years since I'd done like a real deal like video. And I was like, I'm going to put out a video. Like I'm going to make it happen. Literally like first clip of me like trying something gnarly i was trying a feeble three off this like roof like it it was a big i, I don't want to i don't want to show the clip because i want to use it for the video for sure. but i'll show it to you guys later but uh it it was a it was probably like an eight foot drop oh. and it was just the perfect just outlet just like it was like a metal like great or like a metal like outing on like a roof we went to go feeble three off it and i just like spun as if it was all like a foot tall ledge like a fucking idiot. Oh, yeah. And I was like, as soon as I spun, I'm like, yep, that's not it. And I was like, really like, falling. Oh. And I was like, and I, if I would have not put my foot out, I probably just went and like, poof, just smashed my head. And so I put my leg out and just folded my shit and like, um, mm. broke my, uh, my outer, my fib, is it your fib? Yeah, I was on the out or whatever. I can I, never remember. I don't, I, I don't know. Tib fib. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know but it, uh, I broke that and it actually, uh, the bone popped out oh. of my other side and because i remember I, I i fell and i felt it something happened and i was like oh fuck something just happened i want to go stand up and i started walking on it and it and i felt hurt feel felt my bone like it felt like i was walking on like a mattress oh like my with springs gosh. it was like <laughs> like it was i was like i was like oh shit Christ. that's not right and so i like went over to the car and i like looked at my ankle and i just saw blood just start pumping through my oh. sock i had like a black sock on and it was just like just like through my sock and i was like and you're fucking Holy walking shit. on this. I was with uh, I was with Tammy uh, Tammy McCarley, and uh, he was like, "Oh, what do we do? What do we do?" I was like, "I was like, just go, just go to the hospital." And I had driven my girlfriend's car, and she had no. I was I had her car, and so she couldn't come meet up. So I was oh, like, no. I was like woozy. I'm like, oh my god. I was like, I'm gonna pass out. I'm like, sent her the pin to her car. I'm like, 
I face. I'm like, hey, oh, I'm probably no. gonna pass out, but like, I, this is where your car is at. It broke my leg. I'm going to the hospital. Oh no! <laughs> and then I had surgery here and all that shit. And then that was a whole nother like three months of no riding, four yeah. months almost. And um, then I had to get back slowly with that. And then I then I had some like PTSD riding off roofs. Absolutely. And I was like, fuck, man. Like, I, I, I love riding off roofs, and now I'm, like, scared as shit to do it because I snapped my shit doing it. Obviously, I was trying something gnarlier than yeah. I'd ever tried because I always cause I always have done feebles off roofs, and I did the feeble first, no problem. And um, and uh, But, like, I I talked to multiple people, and they're like, you need to start doing feeble threes off roof because you can do feeble threes really good. You start feeble threeing off shit. And I'm like, and so, like, I did it's the so feeble gnarly. was so perfect that yeah. I was like, I have to try it. Like, that's like, I gotta push myself to try it. Like, and it just pushed it too far. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. And so, like, I didn't. I think I wrote off like my first roof, like maybe a year after that. Yeah. And what was that? What What was the process to get yourself back up? Just like grin and bear it, suck it. It up was honestly cup? hanging out with Marcel Anderson. Mm-hmm. Like, he writes for Colt. He's like the homie. Um, like, he. We were like trying to get him to write off a roof. I'm like, you could ride off a roof. And I was like, I'll do it with you. <laughs> and I, so I just got out there. I was like, God, I don't want to fucking do this right now. I don't yeah. want to do this right now. And like, rode off, a foot blew off. Like, my bad <laughs> leg like, blew off. Oh. And I was like, oh, thank God nothing happened. Cause like, I mean, yeah, I can't break it now. It's got a fucking rod in it. That's but like, crazy. I can't, can't break it now. But the other day, I, I, I went, I rode off a roof the other day. Like, that was here. That, like, it was like a roof that you could like gradually go higher and higher and higher. And I finally rode off something that was like, like six foot probably seven foot or something like that and i was like okay like getting back into it That's and like with cool. filming like the video the full length video that we're trying to do um i definitely have some roofs that i'm like i'm eyeing up that i want to do really bad but it's just mentally like yeah. with work and school like you got a lot more riding on it now you know yeah, what I mean? you're, not, sure. you're not 18 just yeah. like sending it for nothing i was talking about trauma with a friend and just a very unassuming guy this guy dave and he, I don't know, he broke it down in such a way that, like, kind of spoke to me. He's like, the biggest thing with trauma is repetition. It's the only way you can break trauma. And it's like, the only thing that's going to get you back to going off roofs is going it. fucking off roofs. And it's like, yeah, it's so easy and forever. such a fucking mind fuck at the same time. So Yeah, it's such a hard yeah, thing to, like, things. yeah, for sure, like, to get back out of that. Like, because you get into a comfort zone of being safe, right? And yep. it's like, yeah. and you have that in your head where you're like, well, that thing like killed me last time, so like I don't want to do that again. again. Yeah, but it's like it's so it is fulfilling when you can like yeah. punch through that and like yeah, like m- make a mental note like, is it wor- like what is it worth? Mm-hmm. Like, is yeah. it worth it to you to do this? And it's like it usually is. Yeah, like, you know what I mean. Like, if it's something worth dedicating yourself to, it's probably worth it. Yep. Yeah, and I like for myself personally, like from injuries like that, like I always find myself like um, when I like get stuck of like being scared to do it like i'll be sitting in bed at night and like Mm -hmm. staring at the ceiling like man this really sucks that i'm like still scared to do this and i'd be dreaming about it you know and like i do while driving i'll be driving and my hands will get all sweaty Sweaty. Mm -hmm. like just thinking of like a setup and i'm like isn't that more scary than doing it i feel like it is sometimes because then you build it up as bigger than it really is then you get there and you're like oh like it's not as big as i thought it was even after i do something like when i'm on the bike I'm usually very calm, and then I'll literally be taking a shower that night and be like, "Oh my god!" Like I could have done stuff. Yeah, I could have yeah, went over the bars. I could have done this, and then like go back and I go do it again. And I'm like, "Oh, that wasn't that bad." Yeah. And I go back to like my house. I'm like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, you start like running through all the variables <laughs> that could have gone wrong. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's interesting talking about injury, but I'd like to kind of talk about like sacrifice that's kind of gone into where you're at now as a writer and stuff like that, like. What do you mean? Just like the sacrifices. What you've, do you mean? Yeah. Sacrifices. Just, I, I, was like, I, was like, I was like, I was like, what do you mean by sacrifices? Yeah. Just um, like sacrifices you've had like to make, goats, in your, make in your chickens, life. No yeah. Things you've had to sacrifice. No, just like, you know, Virgins. not going like ditching school to go ride bikes or like, you know, oh. not taking certain jobs or like um, just life sacrifices you've made to like make it so you can like ride bikes pretty much as like a day job kind of thing. I've definitely, um, I've definitely made it a, a big point that whatever job I want has to have flexibility. Yep. Yeah. Has to. Um, that's just a given. Like, cause just my lifestyle and what makes me the most happy is being able to just go and like be able to go to like come, be able to come here and mm-hmm. do this. You know what I mean? Like if I worked any other job, I probably couldn't do this. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, so um, flexibility is a big thing. So I sacrifice a lot of like my opportunities job wise um, 
just to live this kind of lifestyle. Yep. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, it's like, and honestly, looking at it, it's like I'm not really living. I'm not really living a lifestyle that's like insane. It's just literally just an enjoyable one. Yeah, you're doing what you want to do. Yeah, and it's uh, because I'm a full time student also, so it's like I, I go to college, and so like I work part time and I go to college, so it's like. I, and I try to do school online so I can go and do that. But uh, like fall semesters, they don't usually offer online stuff for a lot of the studio stuff I have to do. And so like probably during the fall, I'm going to have to sacrifice maybe writing less because I have to do that. Yeah, so like, for sure. And that's money. You know what mm-hmm, I mean? Yeah. It's like I don't, get paid to, I don't get paid to do this. So it's like I literally just do it. Uh, out of like my sure will I wanted to get it get it done that's cool what are you uh studying what's your degree um so it was uh it was general business when I first started college just because I didn't know what the fuck absolutely I, I didn't I did, didn't know one. what didn't know what I wanted to do if you go do. to college you've got to be a general business <laughs> major it's at least always one there yeah. yeah and so I was just like but like my main goal was just like I just want to get my AA just get my AA and just like then I can like figure out what I want to do once I get past that because like, then it opens up everything else um, and Florida has a thing where it's like if you go to like the community co- or the state college and you get your associates, you can go to any university and like choose any path you want to do. So I was going to go to Seminole State and then go to UCF. So I got my associates in general general business. And then I was like, oh, well, I want to do graphic design because I like drawing and all this stuff. I was like, that will be really cool. And then I got into graphic design and I was like t- doing all the prereqs and learning more about like the programs and the, all the things you have to do and I started seeing like the kids that I have to be competing with and I'm like these fuckers are no joke like they literally like only like because nowadays it's, it's iPad it's iPad and uh, and Procreate and, and Adobe and all this stuff it's not pen and paper it's yeah. not which I knew that going into it but I thought I would be able to be learning learning it in a better way where I did get better at Adobe and it's like the programs are great but it's not it's not like I didn't want to go home and learn it on my own because I was so burnt out on learning it so I was like and I found out that the program to get into was like a 70 student like acceptance out of wow. like 500 kids and I was like I'm I'm decent at drawing but I'm not that fucking good mm-hmm. like I'm not so I was like I'm not gonna do that and so like I, around that time uh, there's an event called uh, Art Basel in Miami um, it's a huge like art exhibits like in, insane it's nuts whole city goes nuts for it I went down there and I experienced that and I experienced like what true fine arts is like and like exhibitions and like graffiti artists and like all these just in, just in just seeing the money and like the just the atmosphere of it and the subculture I was like I want to be in this somehow and so I was I, I was like googling like what like uh to be a curator like what <laughs> like yeah. what like what what degrees usually do and i found out that ucf has a uh, visual arts management which is like special it's a marketing driven degree along with sales so i'm learning like marketing and sales stuff along with it but it's driven towards like exhibitions and like um like major curation Damn. so Damn, i learned a lot sick. i learned a lot of that's art cool. history yeah um you know i love art history i love learning a lot about like you know old artists from like 1700s and all that shit and oil and all that stuff like it's really cool to me but i also love learning about like you know like warhol and all that shit that shit like really gets me amped like watching documentaries about that stuff and learning about it and going to new exhibitions and whatnot so Mm -hmm. but yeah i'm going to school for that now wow um i think i have like a year and a half left or whatever i if i think it's gonna be at the end of it, it's going to be six years that i've been in school Mm -hmm. but like i kind of had like a lull where i was like only taking two classes or like one class sure kind of bit myself in the ass doing that but um it's all part of the fun yeah, yeah. do but. you think uh i mean it's really cool talking about like art history and stuff do you think that like art plays into your writing style at all do you like draw from like inspiration uh, from art at all no i don't think so um i definitely have had a couple ideas as far as like wanting to do a video that's more of like a um, visual art piece mm-hmm. rather than like just an edit yeah mm-hmm. um i want to do I had I've had this idea for a long time to do a video that's more of like it's more cinematography and more just like maybe some like sounds lame but like poetry or what whatever like no, maybe some like some it. message right. in it um, m- mostly describing like my personal battles as like wanting to become like a professional and then maybe not becoming that anymore and diving into something else and just wanting to have time to ride my bike and seeing how I can make a video like that 
that translates all that, but also have writing in it. Yeah. I don't know. That's like an idea I've had, but I think that's as far as like my art. I love that. Has ever gone yeah. like you know like I know like Rich Foreign has a lot of insane cinematography in his stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I like really sketchy like punk rock like like shit like grainy like gnarly so i would want to make something that's more like you know maybe have like shit of like war like yeah, like yeah. war yeah. shots yeah. and like crazy shit and then maybe go like have nature involved and stuff i don't know well i just, I, I, I have no idea i'm just like i think that's a cool concept too though like wanting to like yeah breaking like doing something that like really isn't like yeah. widely accepted in bmx mm-hmm. right now you know like mm-hmm. everybody wants like the shredded stuff mm-hmm. but like I love the idea of like telling a story or like incorporating poetry. Yeah. It's like I talked to like Chris Fox about this a lot, like because mm-hmm. he you know writes books now and yeah. like he's publishing books and he's been a writer for a long time, mm-hmm. but he was so in his head about putting that stuff out because yeah. he was like, "This is not accepted." Yeah, the industry it's more just like you got balls, like you send yourself, <laughs> yeah, and you do and you do videos, and it's like it's like I don't know, I don't know. I, yeah, I as I, as I'm getting older, I'm viewing it as such a more not as serious thing. Yeah. And like I think that's important like to not view it as that. Like and right. so like whether it be like me incorporating art or Chris writing stuff, mm-hmm. like I think that's important to just maybe remove people from like this little tiny world that we're in as far as BMX goes and being like let's enhance it with other shit. Like Well, and it, like I think doing that like goes it breaks the bounds of what people expect BMX to be. Mm-hmm. You know, like I the vi- the video that comes to mind right away is uh Mike Mastroni's new Industrialize. Mm-hmm. Um my my wife watches BMX videos, but she's never like, "Oh my god, that's crazy." And she watched that mm-hmm. video and because it's so, like so much like cinematography and it's very cool art direction, she mm-hmm. was like, "Let's watch that again. That was yeah. cool." And so, like, thinking about that kind of stuff is, like, mm-hmm. really cool to me is, like, how people can tell a story to somebody who doesn't ride BMX and doesn't care and intrigue them. Like, I think that's cool. Even, like, thinking about somebody like a Nigel Sylvester, right? Like, yeah. he's changed, like, the whole game, the way he films his videos. And a lot of people in BMX aren't into that. Mm-hmm. But, like, people watch those videos on the outside and they're like, holy crap, BMX. But yeah, cool. yeah, look how many yeah. subscribers he has on Instagram <laughs> or YouTube. Or yeah, I, mean, I, think, I think there's something really cool to be said about that. Yeah. It's like approaching the the industry with your own like version yeah. of what BMX is. That's why I, I um, usually if someone's like, whether it be I sit next to someone on a plane or some shit and they're like asking me like what it is I do and uh, I like don't, I'm like trying to explain it to them and they're like like oh I guess I get it and like and like they really are intrigued by what you're saying. I just go watch a watch this uh documentary called Above Below. Just watch this. So like good. I literally always reference people to watch that because it really does like give you a good input into like what people think and it's yeah. it's like a movie and like people can get it more and like yeah really i think that was a really cool yep, big yeah. i actually just rewatched that yesterday and yeah. like i think it's cool because it really illustrates like the culture and the lifestyle and like it goes beyond being just a bike rider and, yeah. you know it's like the lifestyle that's involved yeah. and like all the cool stuff i think it's definitely hard though like to like <laughs> to do it to do it in a good way that doesn't sound like corny. Yeah, that's, yeah. Mm-hmm. And just be like, this, yeah. is, this is like my lifestyle. I just like, yeah. it's like, it's like, it's very easy to like make something that's like a serious thing to us yeah. sound like very that. cheesy. Yeah, very cheesy. Mm-hmm. It, but I mean, that's stuff. But I mean, that's also working. People with, like that shit nowadays. Yeah, so. yeah. And working with a videographer that's got the same kind of mindset as you, and then you know, with the yeah. editing process and stuff, because that's what a lot of it comes down to. Yeah, yeah it's being on that like say, having bringing the same energy to like that yeah whole Build, thing. building a team around you of people with the same goal yeah you know? well yeah. And i think it's interesting like talking to you about like you know your other interests and stuff and like mm-hmm. your approach to bmx like, and then seeing like what you know you guys have created down in florida with like swamp mm-hmm. fest and stuff like yeah i think that's such a cool thing because you guys are really like driving the industry now like everybody i talk to talks about like swamp fest and like how cool that is and like that's awesome give, it's give, cool to hear yeah, that i didn't really yeah. i didn't really know that honestly. yeah like, yeah like, give us a bit of a background about what swamp fest is because people will have seen like these mini clips if they but what what is swamp fest um i mean it was really like so there used to be um there used to be an event called band in the backyard and uh, that was an event that was driven for um, Ricky Bates. Um, you remember Ricky Bates? Mm-hmm. Um, he was a writer that rode for Shadow. 
uh, he died um, when I was when I was way younger or whatever, and they um, they put up um, they did like this band in the backyard event that was just a massive party, pretty much like a mini swamp fest kind of. And uh, a couple years had gone by, and um, Scotty Scotty got hurt, and um, we were like we were already wanting to do some kind of event, and we were like and we were like, just want just want we were just want to do a jam like just like band in the backyard, we wanted to do band in the backyard too kind of, and um, and. Uh, we we're like, all right, well, cool. Like we start like some entree, like we're working on it or whatever. And then we we're like, and then it kind of it turned into Swamp Fest. Like it kind of turned into Swamp Fest. And then uh, um, we were like, all right, well, we'll just make sure that like I mean, we'll charge, and then all the proceeds can go to Scotty, cause like we can do it all for him. That's you cool. know what I mean. And so like the whole first Swamp Fest that we did, it we had like fifteen hundred people, and like yeah. all the proceeds went to Scotty. Jeez. And it was so sick because it was like such a diy like thrown together we had like no budget we had no money like we literally were just going and stealing pallets like yeah. behind <laughs> pit this. places and just like putting our own hard work into it and just whoever wanted to come out and help they could come out and help and like so we all made it we were just we were grabbing bullshit like like old refrigerators and it's <laughs> just whatever all kinds of crazy shit and um dave mcdermott was there doing all kinds of cool like he made like that curve bar like a wave and it was just so ridiculous. The obstacles and, that are there are absolutely insane. Yeah, we. I mean, anything from a quarter pipe to a fucking rail to a massive six foot pole jam, like this. Anything that we could could have thought of, like we did, had. That was the first year we did the open loop, um, and people just lost it for the open loop. Yeah. they were just like, <laughs> "This is so sick!" Like, oh, "This is so badass!" And then we made the open loop into a massive spine that Corey Corey has a clip jumping it. It's insane. Um, but yeah, so it just turned into this massive party, and then, you know, at night it got nuts, and we had the biggest fire ever, and, and then it was over, and we were like, or th- also, just to reflect, this is not me, this is my brother, right. like, this is all my brother's, like, brainchild and his hard work, like, I just help, right. um, but, like, so, like, it happened, and, like, you know, a couple months had gone by, and they were kind of thinking, they're like, yeah, like, maybe we should do another one, like, that was pretty awesome, like, but like, where are we going to do it? Like, cause we did the first one at like some, our buddy's property and, uh, the neighbors were not stoked. They were mm. pissed. And like, it, and we were, well, we were in the yeah. middle of nowhere too. Like they were like blocking, like the neighbors were like throwing two by fours and shit out in the middle of the road, like to like block or like four by fours. So no one would drive through. No or whatever. Way. <laughs> it was, it was a shit show, but, uh, it was awesome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So like time goes on and we're, and they're like, maybe we should do another one and so we found they found a, found a venue that was like an MX place like a, a racing place and we had the second one and that one was fucking gnarly because it was like we had a there was a big concrete strip where they did like truck pulls on that we could build ramps on and so we built all these badass ramps on there and we had um I don't think that was the year that we had the van no I don't think we had the van that year but uh we had a big ass open loop all that shit we had band we had a bunch of bands um I mean, it was sick. And the fire, that was like, I think that was the pinnacle fire that everyone was like, holy shit. This is the biggest fire I've ever seen. Because you guys are burning the ramps at the end of it, Yeah, so like, so like, so the whole, the whole concept, what it turned into was that the second one, we're like, what are we gonna do all these ramps? We're like, just fucking burn it. Like, what is, what is burn it all? Like, and this is also when wood was like cheap. It wasn't like. It yeah, it wasn't it was easier to get away with it. Um <laughs> and we the budget was still low, whatever, and so like it turned into this thing where it's like, Burn everything. Oh like look, gosh. we're gonna burn it all and like um uh, my bike got stolen at that one. No I think. Way. Yeah, like I I put like my bike like in, in like so we had like a like a lean to like shack made out of pallets and I like we were like hanging out and like put my bike in there like just to like keep it away and I guess I started burning the shack and someone just uh, yanked my bike oh and just no. took it. Oh no! Woke up in the morning. Um, it was all kinds of. It would just look like a war zone. Yeah. And then we were just like after that one, we we're like, "Yep, yeah, we're doing this every year That's nice. for sure." <laughs> so and then sick. it like, then like the third year was so badass. Like the third year was like we had I think I think we had close to like twenty five hundred people. Wow. Like we had like a shit ton of people. Right. Like a lot. And all of these people are paying to get in. Yeah, so like it's, okay. it's just like you just pay up front, and then yeah. you know, like, and then then we eventually started like doing like people wanted T-shirts, and Vans was helping out and doing like shoes wow. and shit. Like, and it was like you can only get them here. 
Yeah. That's and so people were like lined up to get it because they were like so hyped on it and like it was such a sick concept and people had come to like the first one and the second one and they were like, we're coming every year. Yeah. And like, so the third one was so badass and it was insane. And then we we're going to do uh, that, that venue sold. So we we're going to do a new venue and the venue that we we're going to do it that we, that we just did it at, uh, he, it was even wilder. Like they had a full mm-hmm. like off-road course in the back, like for trucks, like four by fours and shit. And it was like huge, huge place. And, um, and we're going to, we did, we're going to do vans inside this pavilion thing. And it was going to be all legit. And so we literally like, we were building through like January and February or I think, yeah, just February. And then March happens, 2020. Yes. And we literally were like, we thought the fucking world was ending. Yeah. Like we, like we were literally, I remember like Cody Diggs was there and he was like, dude, like I might have to leave. Like, I don't know if I'll be able to make it back into Rhode Island. Like he was like, we were all like tweaking out. We were right. like, shit dude. Like, cause there was like, <laughs> there was like fighter jets flying by and we're like, dude, like what is this? Some red Dawn shit. Like, yeah. so like, <laughs> that was like, a cont- scary era. Contagion. Like yeah. it's, it was fucking crazy. So in Florida. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. And so, so we were like, we're like, fuck, all right, let's call it. And so like, we like left the ramps there and we're like, well, like, you know, maybe, th- maybe it'll blow over and we can do it again. So we kind of left the ramps there and just like moved them over into like the, um, like by the dirt jumps and we left them there and left them there and left them there. And then like, it like the whole year went by and we were like, all right. And then that's when Dig did that article, um, about like the swamp fest that didn't happen or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it was like all those photos of the ramps all like rotting and oh, shit yeah. that we'd built before. Oh. Then, um, 2021, end of 2021, we were like, we're doing it, like, regardless, we're going to make it happen, and we did October, and people were hyped, oh, and it was yeah. so... Coming gna- out of COVID, Oh, like- my God, it was so gnarly, like, we, and the band, like, we, we did the bands in the side, and, like, um, they are like, throwing hay bales and shit, there was hay everywhere, <laughs> and Jason Watts started this thing that is called the Long Drunk. Dude. And it's just literally just a long jump into mud, and mm-hmm. um, that's where that, that that dig cover photo was shot. The dude doing the backflip off the kicker, dude. that dude slammed just, pretty hard. The yeah, first one he too, was getting he? bodied, and um, so yeah, it just turned out to be this fucking big blowout. And now um, we did one in April, um, kind of got rained out a little bit, but um, now we're gonna do it annually. Yeah, annually we're gonna try to aim for April 9th nice. every single year. It's so, so cool, so. man! It's just cool to see, like I said, that culture that you guys have curated it just and like turned into something completely mm-hmm. out and, of what we expected. And like, like seeing young kids in Colorado at the skate park talking about Swamp Fest, like they haven't even been, but they're yeah, talking about it's crazy. it. And like oh, it's yeah. so yeah. fucking cool to like see that. Like it just kind of reminds me of that like era of Texas Toast or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, where it's like this like yeah. legendary thing. Like exactly. everybody in the industry is there. Like it's just such a cool like the energy that comes out of that is yeah. insane, you know? And like, that's what yeah. we hope. I mean, we definitely hope that we can maintain it to be as sick as it is. Like, yeah, for, forever. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for a long yeah, that's, time. I mean, know? it's so, gotta be hard for you guys when you sit down and start really thinking about like what the next year looks like. Yeah. Like, trying Trey, to... Trey definitely has to go through. I mean, people don't understand like Trey has to go through a lot of like, mental preparation for the whole mm-hmm. thing because it's exhausting he's Dude. he's running around doing all kinds of shit and uh i don't think anyone really realizes like how much he's committing himself to it for sure so like he's like he's always like he's like sorry if, if you were saying hi like if you're saying hi to me while i was at the event i was running around he's like i apologize he's doing everything he's worried yeah. about people getting in the gate worried about someone's yeah. lighting some shit on fire yeah like, somebody falls he yeah. has to make sure that they're yeah. okay yeah so like it's a little bit everything we I mean, we've definitely had a little bit more help um like as far as like managing all of it like with some other companies but like um dude like yeah it's that's crazy it's gnarly it's yeah. one of those gnarly things if you haven't gone like you should go it's definitely worth the time mm-hmm. um we promised probably have better weather this year <laughs> this year, you know so yeah, yeah i'm excited to go i want to go to, i wanted to go this Sorry. year but we were just i forget what we had going on we had an event or something but yeah we're going this next year we have, right. to we have to go you got to yeah, yeah. maybe we'll sponsor like the jumps. a ramp the or jumps something are fun. Jumps yeah. are really dude fun. the jumps look sick uh my buddy matt cordova was like telling me how much fun yeah. they were when he went out the year or so yeah yeah that's, that's sick. sick man well uh let's talk about um the projects you're working on now with like shadow and juvie hall and all that stuff like, what's your role there? I see, like, on Instagram that you're, like, swinging hammers and helping out there. <laughs> and so, like, where do you fit in with that whole, whole yeah, thing? Yeah, so I, uh, I I quit my job at a – I was, like, working on an interior design firm, and I didn't like it anymore. And so uh, – and Ronnie was like, hey, like, I think we're thinking about doing some kind of, like, you know, retail coffee space for Sparky's. Like, 
I don't know if that's interesting to you. Like, do you want to be maybe a part of it? Like maybe we could do some, you can do some kind of social media stuff. I know you're interested in that. And I was like, yeah, like I'll think about it for sure. And then like it blossomed into like, I'm like, I think my title there is like sales, social and um, event management, like associate, like kind of do like all the social media stuff along with like uh, the event planning and whatnot. And then I'm also in the storefront, like actually helping people like sell bikes and like having that background, like working in the interior design world for a little bit. Were you able to help like curate what the inside of this place looks like? Um, I mean, I definitely like said, said a couple things, but um, I mean, it was really honestly like all of like. Like the design of it all, like was really Ronnie's idea. Like, like, like the way that like the colors are in it, like the way that it flows is all in it. Like that's whole his idea. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Dan Reed, the guy that's the general manager of the place, like he's he's an insane bike mechanic, but he also like is a really good like carpenter. Um, he has built like everything in there, everything from the window sills down to like the part displays to. Okay. Uh, the sta- did he helped do like stereo stuff like the sound shit in the place like um figured looks, out figured out beautiful. all the coffee yeah. stuff like dealing with like all the other like, roasters and but yeah um so yeah it's um it's gonna be it's like a it's a retail it's a retail space full service bike shop it's a coffee shop and then just all general hangout um Ronnie really wanted to make it. It, it it was it was the first idea was just for it just to be a retail retail space for Sparkies and just to just to broadcast the the the, the companies that they cover, um, and then it was kind of more like like well like let's just make it let's make it more than that like let's make it like a place that people want to go and like indulge in and like be there and it can be like a sense of community and it could not and it could be. It could be anything we want it to be because it's a space. It's a space that we could use for anything. And, like, let's have it be all derived from BMX and bicycles in general. So, like, that's where I kind of came into play. And I was like, I, like, what I want for the place is I want it to be, I want to, I want to exceed everyone's expectations for the place. I want to make it something that, like, is more than we could ever imagine it being, like, do um do like art shows for local artists we could do like vintage pop-up sales we could do like if someone's like into like fresh produce they can like sell their stuff there we can do car meetups van meetups we could do bmx jams we could do you know bmx shows like like or we could do um bicycle uh like repair like classes and shit like you know teach people how to work on their bike and like true wheels and all this shit and like teach them like what a true like how to manage your bike and like do that stuff because we're it's full service so we're gonna be doing mountain bikes also oh, that's so cool. like it's kind of crazy through the whole process i've learned a little bit more about mountain biking because i don't mm-hmm. know anything about mountain biking and so like i've learned more about that and so uh but yeah it's i think we're just going for the general vibe to be like if you want to show up and you just want to like if you're going to the skate park and you just want to show up and just like have a cup of coffee and watch an edit you can do that or if you just want to just come and just say what up, you can do that. Or you can come in if you wanted to buy it. If you're a 12 year old kid, like l- looking to ride a BMX bike, you can go and buy a bike. Like we're only c- we're, um, carrying uh, like five brands. We're carrying Shadow, Sabrosa, Ranch, Colt, and uh, Bone Death. Heck yeah. Um, so all Sparkies like all related. Cool stuff. Yeah. Well, I think it's cool too, like that concept of it being like a community hub, right? Like, yeah. And it's not, I mean, it's obviously stemming from BMX, but you're doing stuff outside of BMX. And, like, the fact that people who may never have ever experienced BMX Mm -hmm. get to come in and, like, experience that culture. That's exactly the point. Off the top of my head, I can't really think of too many places that are that way. And, like, I love that idea because there are, like, skate shops that are Mm -hmm. kind of that way. And, like, you know, being able to reach out to people who have never experienced that mm-hmm. is freaking cool. And it grows the industry. And, like, exactly. there's a lot of positivity oh, that comes huge. out of that stuff. It's huge. I remember having a couple shops like that as a gram. And then when I first came over to the States, there was Trend BMX down in Austin. Yeah. The, the amount of welcoming, like I was riding a 26 inch wheel and before I went out to 9th Street, I was just like, yo, is this okay? Like I emailed ahead, I called ahead. I was just <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. don't want to ruffle any feathers. And Trend BMX was the most welcoming. People just hanging out in there and building that community. But where, where's Juvie going to be located? Or where is so it's located? it's located directly across the street from Sparky's in Longwood, um, Longwood, Florida. Yeah, Long, Longwood, Florida. Um, it's in yeah, it's in historic Longwood. Um, but yeah, we want it to be like when people like we wanted to have it be a reason why people want to visit Longwood. Yeah, like right. you know, be like like what the fuck's Longwood? Yeah. Like what's in Longwood? There's yeah. nothing in Longwood, but we want people to be like. 
oh, like I went to Longwood and went to the sixth spot, like has coffee and they're like playing, playing, playing videos. It's and they welcoming. Do, they do events on yeah. the weekends and they do all kinds of different stuff, not just BMX stuff, but maybe like have other things. Yeah. So making it more of like a destination yeah. for people to go and experience it. I Yo, think. Hold up. Real quick. Oh, go ahead. I have to pause this real quick. Okay. I've had to piss for like 20 minutes. <laughs> go for it. Okay. Hold up real quick. <laughs> Let's so talk about now, the like... YouTube thing while, while we're here talking about it. Are we it, recording like, again? Yeah, right? we're recording. We're, we're <laughs> straight back into it. Um, yeah, I think it's cool to see, again, like talking about the culture that you guys are immersed in, talking about the YouTube thing. Like, it's really cool to see your guys' lives portrayed in that way. Like, you get to yeah. see your day to day and, like, through, like, Big Boy's channel and stuff like that. Like, you and Trey are both such, like, integral parts, like, your characters mm-hmm. on the channel. And, like, yeah. It's definitely a weird thing being like a character on a show, but yeah, I mean, I get excited when I see you guys on there. Like, it's a cool thing. It's cool to see like how you guys are like living your day to day life and like how you're warming up on the ramp and you mm-hmm. go to a pump track or whatever you're yeah. doing that day. And, I mean, like, and it's honestly like the whole. I mean, I'm sure some people are like. I mean, obviously, like we're, we're talking about it because like we. I mean, we used to get big boy shit all the time about having like talk to the camera, but it's like you kind of need to mm-hmm. like. People need to know what the fuck's going on. Like, mm-hmm. like, 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 where are they going? Like, yep. what are they doing today? Like, if it's just like a timeline of your day, and you're not giving people guidance, like, especially kids, like, it, um, it boosts their. I mean, I, I've heard this before, but it boosts kids' confidence if they know what to expect in a video, and then it comes to fruition. Interesting. So that's why I think that's like something with like YouTube, but um, it's like every every single thing we do though is like not scripted. It's not like planned it's not like if we literally are just like if we want to do something and big boys there to film it we film it that's cool but like um he he he's obviously better than we are about like explaining what the hell is going on so like usually like he's either in his house in the morning or whatever and he'll explain what we're going to do that day and then we end up going and doing it or it goes full sideways and we end up doing <laughs> something completely different um but yeah i mean it's like i think <laughs> at first like it's like when we were doing videos with scotty it was like kind of like we were showing up to like do a video and like that was because because we it was like games so we did games and yeah. stuff like that so we're like, like our goal is to do this game and then it's like it, we are what we've progressed to is just like we're just filming life yeah like right. literally life like well i feel like it's really there's like that really hard you know line in the sand where it's like if you are being strategic and you're creating content like based off of a plan it's really difficult to adhere to that and like not everybody's on the same page mm-hmm. Whereas, like, when you're on the other side of that line, like, you're just kind of filming what you normally do. Mm-hmm. It's, like, it does come through as more authentic and, like, less, like... It's not as forced. Yeah, Like, it's if less... you've got it scheduled and People everything... People can sniff out the bullshit. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's... That's one thing when we try to, like... People aren't fucking stupid. Like, yeah. we're not, like, we're not going to try to, like, create something that's, like... Oh well, they're not gonna know a difference. It's like no, like people know. Well, people know. Like we're gonna we're gonna try to make something genuine for people. We're not gonna just like fill them full of shit. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but that's a that's one thing that we try to strive for. Yeah. Is just literally just filming exactly what we do. I think and it shines. Big boys through. are really good. He's really good at doing that. Mm-hmm. Like, and it's it's cool. It's cool that like we're all a part of it. But it's like Big Boy really toes the line as far as like he edits all the videos, like he plugs all the merch stuff like in, in there. And like and one of his main things was like he he wanted for the channel. He said he, <laughs> he used to always be like, I I just want this to turn into something where like we can all benefit from it. You know what I mean? And we can all can just like we can all just have a good time. And like, you know, like we can get like fucking pit bikes if we wanted to. And we can all just raise hell. And we can all just have fun. Like it never, ever was like we got to make sure we make, we're making money off this. Like it was never, ever like that. It was just literally like, how can we have the most amount of fun as possible? That's like, and that's what it's always been like for us. And yeah, luckily we just like having fun in our day to day life anyways. So I like what you were saying earlier too, about like, you know, he funnels his merch sales into weirdo world. And like, that's a place where you guys all get to play around. And like, I don't know, there's a lot to be said about somebody who's like, so passionate about what they're doing that like money is not an yeah. object you know like, like they're sacrificing their income for making awesome shit for yeah, people to see totally witness. and like obviously you need money to live but like that's not the deriving factor and i think that's how you make something yeah. really great so that's cool to like hear that and, like, we gotta get a big boy on here for sure oh yeah I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll we'll definitely do it to where like because he wants to come out here like when i'm out here because he'll probably staying with us at my girlfriend's apartment 
and uh, we'll, we'll both get on. Hell yeah. So, yeah. I would love yeah, that. That'd sure. be That's super fun. fun. Oh, yeah. um, let's go back to talking about like Shadow and uh, the founder, Ronnie. The man. Yeah. So I would boss like to man. know. Yeah, boss man, dude. He's like, I mean, <laughs> I've I've watched a ton of videos of him talking about Shadow yeah. and like, you know, the curation of the brand and uh-huh. like every piece that goes into it and hearing you talk about art and wanting to get into like art curation mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Do you look at him as like a mentor? Does he mentor you in some of those he, ways? He's definitely one of the smartest people I know. Like he's definitely one of like the most like smartest business business savvy people I I know. And like he's experienced so much through like trials and tribulations of UGP and mm-hmm. and you know printing sh- printing shirts like in the garage and like doing all this other stuff and like. He told me a story the other day about how he would he was snuck into like this race like the pits at a race and like put UGP stickers on people's like number oh, plates <laughs> like in the nineties and like just like trying to plug his brand and shit and like he's just he's experienced so much as like a business owner and like as a he it, it's shadows his art like mm-hmm. that's that's his art form and um I'm, t- I'm just telling you there's no one that works harder than Ronnie that's so I cool. mean I it, I mean dudes dude's texting people at five o'clock in the morning about what's going down. Like if he has a thought and he just wakes up in the middle of the night, he's probably just going to go to work. You know what I mean? Like he's just so like motivated just to get shit done and get it done properly. Um, I mean, he'll spend three hours, um, he'll spend three hours talking about a zipper on a hoodie. And then, (laughs) but that's also one of the best qualities about him. It's like, it's, there's a reason why shadow has so much detail Mm -hmm. attached to it. It's because he's so motivated to make it that way. Yeah. I heard him say something in a video one time where he's talking about like, um, he wanted every, every piece of anything that's designed for shadow, whether it's a video or a stem for a BMX bike Mm -hmm or tires like he wants people to be able to look at it and know it's coming from shadow and i think yeah that's a really difficult thing to do and like they like shadow exceeds at that every single time and like we had the pleasure of doing this traction shadow collaboration and And it's so good it's so good i made it the other day and i was like oh my god and like dude it was such a fun pro like we've done a ton of collaborations and like they've all been very collaborative and very fun Mm -hmm. but this one and for me was my favorite because like just being so collaborative with um, Sam and everybody that I got mm-hmm. to work with in the whole project. Like, it was just cool. Like I'd get on the phone with Sam for like an hour and a half and we'd just be like, how about this? How about this? Yeah. And like really refined what it was. Yeah. And like, it was cool then to go back and watch the videos, yeah. you know, of everybody involved with shadow talking about how much they care. And yeah. like, I was like, Oh, that's why this was so seamless. And like, still Sam's texting me. He's like, how's it going? What else do we need to yeah. do? And like, it's just cool to like, feel that from like another brand and like just feel that passion coming yeah off of and that's people. the thing like with ronnie like i mean like everyone that ronnie's hired is like they're so they're so immersed into making the brands just so so badass like you know you got you got sam you know doing all like the you know just event or uh project management stuff mm-hmm. or whatever and social and all that stuff like making sure shit's running smoothly jason's doing artwork for sabrosa you know, Arno is doing our work for Shadow, and everyone is dialed at what they're doing, and like, that's Ronnie seeking that out and seeing the talent and acknowledging it. That's and, cool. And making it to where those people like are pushing the brand more and more and more and more and more, and like, you know, that's all deriving from Ronnie's Ronnie's ideas, and just pushing the limit as far as the brand goes and making it bigger and bigger and bigger and just trying to when I feel like keep people interested in it. And you know what I mean? Yeah. Especially it's been like over 20 years. Dude, that's like, crazy. Which is fucking I mean, crazy. I feel like that's like a massive skill set in of itself though. Right. It's like finding the right people for the yeah. right jobs. And like, I think that says something about you too, mm-hmm. that he's incorporating you into Juvie Hall, right? Like yeah. he knows that like you're the right person yeah. for that. He knows I'm like, an anal OCD yeah. person, so he knows I'll fit, fit the but part. But like how sick yeah. is that? Like that's like one of the highest compliments you can get from yeah. somebody who is so decorated in what yeah. they've done. Not just going to hire someone just because like they're – easy work and yeah either not, you know it's like he wants someone that's being able to contribute like he knows you're gonna live he, and he breathe told it. me he was like he's like he's like i think you you have the ability of looking at this more and like caring about it more than most people would probably and like I, that's what i want like that's what i want for like the juvie stuff like working there now like i want to be able to bring 110 percent of myself 
the table. That's so cool. And like, and I, I mean, that was one thing that I said like before I quit my old job. I was like, I want to go to a job where I can broadcast all of the skills that I'm capable of, not just what they want out of me. Like, I want to be able to bring everything to the table as far as like generating ideas, being a good salesman, like figuring out good marketing tools, like all these good things that like I feel like I've developed over the years as far as going to school and like working in an office environment, in a corporate environment. Like I've acquired skills as I've gotten older and being acknowledged for those skills is my most important thing as an employee. And Ronnie definitely like sees that and I appreciate that That's so of cool. him. That's Cause so he cool. definitely sees that in every single person that he like hires and interacts with. Like he sees your skills and your strong suits and he's like, he's like, okay, like, you're good at this. Like, 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 let, 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 bring in it yeah, out of yeah, you. Like, yeah. Like let, let, let's get a little bit like, 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 what do you think of this? Like yeah. he's, he's, he's never like, he's never like, he's never like, he's never like, Oh, well your opinion doesn't matter. Cause it's my brand ever. He's always like, so like, like, what do you think of this? Like yeah. he wants the more feedback, the better. And like, it's awesome. When it sounds like most of the people around him, he trusts at a high level, which oh, is, yeah. makes that even more cool. And they've mostly proven that, that, that they, yeah, he can trust them. Had, are a lot of the people who work for the brand people that have written for the brand? Um, no, not necessarily. I mean, um, Jason, the artist for Sabrosa, he was like in uh, wake skating. Oh, okay. But like he, he, you know, found Ronnie and all that stuff, and found um, Ryan at Sabrosa, and I mean, Arno, he, Ar- Ronnie, and Arno have known each other forever, um, and they've just they just hit it off you know what i mean arno lives in france he's yeah. he's like the main artist for all he did he he's the one he who did drew the drew the traction shirt. design yeah. like Damn. um yeah and then sam sam's uh so dude uh chadwick ryan chadwick mm-hmm. that he's a film for shadow um he was good friends with sam and ronnie knew sam through him and sam used to work in bmx too and it's just like i always view it as like if you know at least a little something about bmx you know what i mean that that never hurts. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like that always helps like understanding the industry in general. Like, but it's very rare that you find someone that like literally has nothing to do with BMX. that has no experience with it working in it. Like, yeah. Cause that's or all, that's a large learning curve. You got to learn a lot of shit. You got to learn about riders. You got to learn about past like, um, companies mm-hmm. and stuff. So, but yeah, so he's, he's the man. And, um, I owe so much to Ronnie, like as far as like just, everything i've had the opportunity to do as far as working with shadow and sabrosa and like yeah he's just he's the shit hell yeah Dude. that's so cool to hear yeah. man well cu- talking about your sponsors though at the beginning you mentioned you're sponsored by a jewelry company and you got some yeah money. yeah so i'm um how did that sponsored come by about? clocks and colors um they specialize in like sterling and sterling silver and all a bunch of other stuff um they're california based they do a lot of like uh motorcycle stuff or whatever but i literally just like i i've all like past couple of years I've worn a lot of jewelry and I wore a lot of like vintage silver and stuff. And, uh, I just found their company and I literally just like, yo, like I'm a freestyle BMX rider. Like, you know, I'd love to rep your shit. Like if you guys are down and they were just like down with it, That's sent sick. me like $600 worth of fucking jewelry. Damn. Just like uh, off the rip. And I was like, word cool. And then I think, <laughs> I think they've sent me over like three grand in jewelry so far, Damn, like dude. over the past like year. That's That's and it's like, well, they're stoked Sick. at what you're doing then. Yeah, yeah. and like, um, I plug them in everything. Like, yeah. all my Instagram posts. Like, I always make sure I tag Shadows Rosa and Clocks and Colors just because, like, they That's stay sick. consistent. Like, I could hit them, up, hit them up and be like, yo, I just lost, like, my favorite, like, ring. Like, <laughs> can I get a new one? Like, yeah, sure. Actually, here's, like, here's enough money for two rings. And you're just like, so, oh, fuck yeah, cool. That's so cool. I would love to be able to, like, work with them, like, more. But, I mean, they're in California. And yeah, they're, yeah. they're more motorcycle-based. But, um, yeah. Yeah, I, I wonder, I mean, is there any hope for you to do a collaboration with them is that something you'd i don't know i mean they, they've i don't know That'd they've, be they've, sick, they've, they've done collaborations with different like they've done collaborations with bands and stuff um i mean i, I don't know yeah you never know unless you ask yeah Just i might have, a good yeah, idea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 i would love to see that we've done like uh giveaways and stuff and like uh discount codes and all that shit like basic, yeah, sure. basic sounds like you need a stuff. limited edition swamp vest string that only sells a swamp vest. oh Just dude. An, al- an alligator, Just an alligator. You imagine? <laughs> that'd be sick dude. like an sw dude Rock, dude could you imagine uh, or S- you uh, see SF? one of them and SF, you're like dude. you just know 
That would be gangster. Know. Yeah, you should pitch him on that idea. They'd probably be keen, dude. I would buy that. That's that would idea. be sick. You gotta go that. down to Swamp Fest for it, though. Yeah. God. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> what's the What's the chances of having an alligator pit at Swamp Fest this coming year? Did you guys oh, have def- one this we, last year? We had time? one this year. I, me and Marcel dug out the alligator pit this year. We put a chain link fence around it. People from uh, Gatorland brought like a uh, an eight foot alligator out. Dude, and that's insane. Put it in the pond. It was sick. That's gnarly. Some, that's some Florida man shit, that's right? The there. people that Florida brought shit. out the alligator like taped it up at night and like they like slept like slept there with the alligator so that no one would go and mess with the alligator. Holy like just shit. to make yeah. sure it was like all right. Yeah, some like, like drunk person stumbles into the <laughs> that's alligator what, like, cage. We're like, we're like we're not gonna keep the alligator out here. <laughs> yeah. Dang, that's wow. crazy. But it was sick. People were like. Like, yeah. oh my God, it's actually an alligator. Like people from like up north and like out west, they were like, uh, like I remember, um, God, who was I talking about? I mean, even Corey, like Corey was like, holy shit, that's like actually like a legit alligator. <laughs> like just funny seeing like West Coast people being like, this is some crazy shit. Yeah. Like losing their mind. You're like, this is every day for us down <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah, dude. yeah, yeah. Well, we've been doing a lot of stuff with Gatorland, Gatorland lately and. I think Trey's like doing like a partnership with them or whatever. No but we've been like going out there, like they're putting us in the pits, like with the alligators, and they're like, Yeah, here's some chicken, like feed it. And no there's, there's like, <laughs> just, like, Oh my god, it's sick though. Next time you guys, if you guys ever come to Florida or whatever, we could do like a tour. At Dude, Gator I would love Land. that. We're like boys with the, the guy Danny that works there, and we'll do some cool Yeah, shit I think sure. I'm coming down in October, so do it. We I'm, should... do it. I'm going down for Fourth of July weekend. Oh, shit. Nice. I, w- I wanted to just blow out this Fourth of July because I'm English. <laughs> So obviously I've got a lot of respect for Fourth of July. And I was like, "Where's the best place to go?" And I got an old homie that lives in Florida, and she's like, "Yeah, you can crash on the couch." I was like, "Do it, fuck Do yeah!" It. Game so on. I'm looking up where Tampa is to Orlando. No? It's about two hours. Oh, dude, Breeze. it's not it's not that bad. There's actually a super dope coffee shop in Tampa called uh, King State. If you've ever King State. next time you're in Tampa, okay. go to King State. King it's sick. State. It's the nice. guys that uh, are in Under Oath. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's Damn, super cool. Like, but holy shit. Well, uh, yeah. I guess we can start wrapping this up and we could go ride some bikes at Boulder Skate Park. Let's do it. I'm um down for sure. Anyone you'd like to give a shout out to? I mean, shout out shout out Ronnie, shout out Ryan, shout out Sam, shout out my brother, shout out big boy Marcel, my mom, my dad, my girlfriend, you know. All, all, the, the, all the homies Hell back it. home. Everyone. Love it. Everyone's dude. A, everyone's a part of it. Everyone makes it a dream. Hell yeah, man. Do you have any uh, parting words that you'd like to leave the people with or anything you'd like to tell the kids coming up? Anything like that? Don't take shit too seriously. Just you go. make it fun. I you like know that. What I mean? Have goals. Go for them. I don't know. Hell yeah, man. No, I think that's <laughs> oh, killer good. advice. Like that's, yeah. yeah, that's impactful shit. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Where can people find you online if they're looking for you? Uh, my Instagram is just at Jabe Jones. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm only on Instagram really Sick. <laughs> try to keep it down to one. And I guess lastly, do you have a timeline for your next video project? Uh, a, like, like a physical timeline? Yeah. Uh, like, do you know when it's going to be dropping? Um, I'm going to try to have it done by this year. Cool. I'm going to try to have it done by the end of this year for Hell sure. Yeah. That's one thing that me and Sam were talking about trying to get done. And, uh, I got a couple of trips lined up too. And me and we're going to, I'm going to France for st- uh, street station. So um, try to do some filming over there too and Sick. get some cool clips. So. Well, I'm looking forward to watching that oh, and yeah. uh, looking Absolutely. forward to watching your guys' full part that you're working yeah. on as well. That's going to be really sick. So, well, uh, thanks for sitting down with us, man. This was no super worries. fun. I'm Absolutely. excited to uh, go get a session in now. Let's do it. Hell I'm yeah. down for All sure. Right. All right. Well, thanks for listening, guys, and uh, we'll see you for the next one. Keep being scared of normal. Later. Later.